TNT presents Black College Football tonight, live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. It's the 11th annual Southern Heritage Classic, featuring the two Tigers from Jackson State and Tennessee State. You're looking live at the Liberty Bowl, where an expected crowd of over 40,000 folks are coming into this stadium to see two teams who know each other meeting for the 35th time. Hello, everybody. I'm George Johnson. Yes, I know it's only week three, but this is a must-win situation for both these clubs. Neither are accustomed to losing. Tennessee State, back-to-back -back champions out of the OVC. The Eastern Division champs from the SWAC were Jackson State a year ago, but they're both coming off losses, and two straight losses would really do damage in their hopes of being ranked high at the end of the season. Our broadcast partner is Charles Mann. These two teams know each other and know each other very well. I think in a lot of ways, the, these two teams mirror each other. Uh, they both have made coaching changes. Uh, Robert Hughes at Jackson State has been there two years. James Reese with Tennessee State is coming into his first season. And both of these uh, ball clubs are very solid organizations where these coaches want to inflict their will and get these kids to believe in their program. I think a lot will be said about tonight's winner and loser and if they can convince these kids that they can still be successful if they lose. At Jackson State, they're starting to call themselves Receiver U. <laughs> I mean, since yeah. 1963, they've sent 22 wide receivers to the National Football League. Keeping the tradition going is Daniel Guy. Daniel Guy, he's a wonderful receiver, 4-3 speed. He's got soft hands. He can make some great catches. Guy has been a solid performer all three seasons at Jackson State. This year he looks to finish his collegiate career. And Edward Reese returns in his second year at middle linebacker, a spot where he's making his presence felt. He's named All-Swank preseason last year, and he was an All-Swank candidate also last season. Jackson State is still working on their passing game, as is Tennessee State. In fact, the leading receiver for Tennessee State has just five receptions as they try to break in the quarterback in Kenton Evans. But once he gets it going, he has a pretty big-time player in Julius Hall. Julius Hall is a wonderful athlete. He's a gifted receiver as well as return man. He has breakaway speed on the outside and can turn a game around on special teams with his no fear attitude. Take a look at the number threes tonight on the field for both teams. There's Ligarius Jennings, the All-American candidate at the secondary. He's the real backbone of the defense. He's a three-year starter and has NFL scouts really checking him out this season. The players aren't the only ones with pressure on the back. The head coaches also have a little pressure trying to turn things around. That's Robert Hughes, the head coach of Jackson State on the right. James Reese, just 31 years old in his first year with Tennessee State. We'll see if they can handle the pressure next here on BET. folks who take pride in taking care of their car, who would rather take the time and save the money by doing the job themselves. In other words, they're the kind of people who turn to AutoZone every week. And while they come to us for the quality parts, for the everyday low price, sometimes they come just for the advice. And that's okay. Because at AutoZone, giving people what they need is what we're all about. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. And by AutoZone, the more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts.
changing faces. Just part of the pageantry here this weekend. Down in Memphis, George Johnson, along with Charles Mann. As we get ready for the Southern Heritage Classic between Tennessee State and Jackson State. And as I said, this is the 35th meeting between these two teams. Both holding on to 16 victories. There were two ties several years back in the 80s. And yet there are no more ties. So we're going to settle things today and find out who takes the lead in that series. John, although we have a feeling they'll be playing each other for years to come. As I said, last down in Tennessee State, they took a loss. They lost to North Carolina A&T. 16 to 14 that ended a 20 game regular season winning streak for the Tigers of Tennessee State as for Jackson State they're coming off a loss against Texas Southern last week 19 to 15 and there's Brian Reynolds the senior place kicker for Jackson State sort of having his problems early on in the season Charles and I will talk about that in a second but Jackson State won the kick, won the toss, that is, and deferred, so Tennessee State will get the football first. Hey, let's go, KB. Let's start this thing all right, KB. Yeah, baby. The Jennings back deep to receive the kick. He is joined by Julius Hall. The ball was taken out past the 20 yard line. And Tennessee State was thrown off first and 10. Carlos right on that return. So Tennessee State, one and one coming into the season, are led by Kenton Evans, the senior from Memphis, Tennessee. He's a transfer from the University of Memphis. That right there is Julius Hall, your wide receiver. But Evans. A two-year starter at the University of Memphis. He's completed 44% of his passes this year. Has four touchdowns and no interceptions. First and 10, immediately going in the air. And the ball is incomplete. Pass was intended for Julius Hall. A look at your offensive line. Offensive line lost four players who got looks in the NFL. We start off with the backs and receivers. Kent Evans, Darnell Brantley is your fullback. Carlo Thomas is your tight end. There's your offensive line. Benedict Abisi has done an unbelievable job for this club, taking over for Benny Anderson, who was an all OVC selection last year. Amariah Robb with the carry. He takes it up the middle, close to a first down. Take a look at your defense. Marcus Greer, Vernon Young. Dante Jones is from Memphis, looking to have a big game at home. Zach Brady, Edward Reese, Elgin Andrews is your linebacking core. And your defensive backs, Kenny Bryant, Xavier Denson, Vince Davis, and Marlon Mouton. Third and four situation, pass is incomplete. It was intended for Ron. So Tennessee State, three and out. And we'll now punt the football to Jackson State. And this is an end zone angle looking at what Mr. Evans had to see there. And that's just a little case of the nerves. I don't think he was set properly on his, in his uh, passing form. Ashley Johnson now will come on to punt the football, averaging 36 yards per punt. And back deep to receive the punt is Tory Thigpen. And folks, Tory Thigpen is one of the most exciting players in all the sweat. All the gone, by the a little bit of everything. Nice high punt. The pin settles under it at about the 31-yard line where Jackson State takes over first and 10, their first possession of the football game. Quarterback for Jackson State is T.C. Taylor, the junior, out of Magnolia, Mississippi. He is the apparent to Mark Washington. Washington last year threw for 29 touchdown passes. TC has got a job trying to live up to the, those standards set by the quarterback last year. Nice and now we've got a, you know what, they just threw a little change. It looks like Robert Kent is going to start. On the depth chart, it said TC Taylor. But number one is back there, handing it off to McLaurin. And McLaurin 
is off and gone, folks. McLaurin is going to go all the way. First play of the game for Jackson State. Touchdown. That was a 68-yard touchdown run for Nathan McLaurin, the freshman from Brandon, Mississippi. Wow. That didn't take long. <laughs> if you remember this game last year, a lot of points scored. You look at the replay here, and it, just a lot of missed tackles at the point of attack. They had it pretty well shut off, Tennessee State did. And then it's smooth sailing. You can't get caught from behind. Nobody should be black blocking in the back. So now Brian Reynolds will attempt the point after. This has been an adventure. An adventure. <laughs> You're absolutely right for Reynolds. And you can see he's extremely happy about connecting on that PAT. And with that, Jackson State takes an early 7-0 lead with 13.47 left in the first quarter. Light, airy cones of crispy corn. There's no such thing as too many bugles. Bugles. More is better. Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, hey, Campbell's tomato soup, huh? You always knew Campbell's was good. Campbell's creamy tomato, huh? You just didn't know how good tomatoes could be. Recent studies have shown that diets rich in tomato products are associated with the reduced risk of certain types of cancer. And Campbell's tomato soup is full of tomato goodness. All eight velvety smooth varieties. There's enough Campbell's here to last me a hundred years. That's the whole idea. Campbell's. Mm-mm, good. And welcome back to Memphis. George Johnson along with Charles Mann here at the Liberty Bowl Live. And Nathan McLaurin. Gone. 68-yard touchdown run. And his club leads seven to nothing. McLaurin coming in is averaging five yards per carry. I think he boosted it up just a little bit with that run right there. We got to talk about this guy right here. There's Reynolds, <laughs> the senior from Jackson, converted on that PAT, but he really has struggled so far this year. Well, you see how excited he was after making an extra point, and you would understand if you followed him this year. He's had it pretty tough. He's 0 for 4 in field goals and only 3 for 6 in point after kicks. In fact, it got so bad for him after the Howard game, he missed all three field goals and decided and thought that maybe he wouldn't play anymore this year. And missed three days of practice, but he's back. Legarius Jennings with the kick return. Takes it out about the 25-yard line with Tennessee State now with their second possession of the football game. Looks to play catch-up now, down 7 to nothing. The Tigers of Tennessee State back-to-back -back champions out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Last year, they finished the regular season 11-0 and number one in all of Division I AA. You know, that doesn't mean anything, though, right now. <laughs> yeah, when you look at the numbers that this offense was able to put up, 37 points per game. They're averaging 26 points per game this year. And they're going to try some trickery early on. Hall passing. Hall pass was intended for C.J. Johnson, the true freshman, and it was incomplete. That, that play right there is a play that you run early in the game when you get the defense trying to settle in and get, and, and get in sync, and you see it right here. We only caught that at the end, but trying to use the nervousness of a team before they get started to try to hit them with a big play. Evans now has three receivers split to the left, two to the right. As I said, completed 44% of his passes. No interceptions so far this year for Evans. Trying to get out of the pocket. And what he's doing, folks. Great defensive play by Dante Jones, who forced the issue and left Evans with nowhere to go. I think uh, as you look at this play on replay, you, you'll find that there really wasn't any pressure on Kenton Evans. He moves because he was concerned that there should have been pressure because he held the ball so long, but it actually wasn't. 
Third down and 18. Loss of eight yards on that sack by Dante Jones. He really has developed as a fine offense, defensive lineman on this club. As Rob takes the handoff up the middle on that third and long situation. So Tennessee State saying, hey, listen, let's just get out of our end, pump the football, put the defense back on the field. Let's get a good look at Edward Reese, number 56, the defensive leader of this Jackson State Tigers club. So Ashley Johnson will come back on the field to pump the football. As I said, Johnson is considered a very solid punter in the OBC. His longest this year is 43 yards. Big Pin is back and again. Nice high punt. Big Pin going to give this one a chance. Took it at the 39 yard line, still on his feet, trying to get to the outside. And returns this punt back about four yards. Where it'll be first and 10, Jackson State. They have a 7 0 lead and looking for more when we get back from this commercial break. sports, baseball, stock car racing, uh, football, basketball, you know, watching sports. That is what I love about cable. Now with AT&T Digital Cable, I get even more. On new channels like ESPN News, Outdoor Life, ESPN Classic Sports, all through the cable I already have. I, I, I wish there were more hours of the day. You know what I would know what I would do? Fishing. I would watch more fishing. Yeah, so many sports, so little time. AT&T Digital Cable. For more sports, call now. Last year, insurance companies made over $23 billion in profits. Their powerful, high-priced lawyers will do almost anything to protect those profits. That's why you need a personal injury lawyer who isn't afraid to take on insurance companies in the courtroom. As Richmond's Commonwealth's attorney, Joe Morrissey never lost a jury trial. That's a perfect 54-0 record. Joe's not afraid of the big insurance companies, and he'll fight to get you what you deserve. If you've really been injured in an accident, you need a fighter on your side. You need Joe Morrissey. Welcome back. We're live coming from Memphis, Tennessee, side of the Liberty Bowl. George Johnson along with Charles Mann and Joe Clay. And Joe's standing by on the sideline. What's going on, Joe? Are you ready for some football? I don't know if you know about my guys football. It's a party down here. You know what I'm saying? It's a party going on. I've been doing this. Everything you know. Who got the best bag? What's going on? Who's got the best chili? All of that. Keep it locked right here. BT Black College Football. Back to George and Charles up top. Well. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. Joe has more fun than anybody in this stadium. You know that, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Damian Duxworth on the first and 10 carried the football for about a yard, and that's not a good sight right there. Duxworth is the leading rusher on this club, and he's hobbling off the field. Keith Fawcett has come in to replace him. Second down and nine, and they're giving it to McLaurin, and McLaurin, I don't know what he had this morning in his bowl of cereal, but he's got a little pep in his step and picks up about nine yards on that play. I can just imagine after running a long run like that, you want to get back out on the field as quickly <laughs> as you possibly can, and you want to go with the same play. I'm sure he was in the huddle saying, hey, let, guys, let's run, the same, let's run the same play again. Takes the ball out to midfield. First, or actually, it's third down and two. Again, inside handoff. And this time they go to Fawcett, and he has enough for the first down. So now with Damian Duxworth, looks like he's coming back into the ball game, and Fawcett comes out. And this is just a run right here. I'm sorry, George. Sorry? Just replay. It's just a run off tackle. Real basic. But you know what? You got to be able to stop those kinds of runs and execute on those kinds of runs if you want to run the football. McLaurin was your lone setback, and Kent tried to throw the football to Torrey Thigpen. Pass was too high to catch. Coverage by B.J. Fletcher, your linebacker. Now right here, Robert Kent is trying to throw the ball off his back foot. He never does get set. And he kind of hung out Tory Thigpen to, uh, to get a nice shot in the back. Second and ten. Ball is marked at the 
let's say 45 yard line. Robert Kent, the surprise starter in the football game, pitching it back to McLaurin. And McLaurin is met by a host of Tigers coming his way. Leading the way, Walter Reese. As you see, Shanae Price right there also was involved on the tackle. And there's Daniel Guy. When you're running the ball out of the eye set right here, a lot of times where you're going to find the holes is cutting it back. You see the pursuit of Tennessee State is right there meeting McLaurin. Ducksworth is your lone setback back with Kent. On a third down and long, Kent throwing the football, looking for Guy on the out pattern, overthrew him. So that'll create a fourth and long situation. They'll bring out their punter. And actually, they don't have to bring him out. He's their quarterback, Robert Kent. Right. And that's the thing about Kent that Coach Hughes likes is that he can do so many things. Punt the football, get back and throw it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want my quarterback out there getting hurt doing something else. Robert Kent has only completed 14% of his passes. Those first two throws in this past series didn't look very good. Kent, end over in, back to Hall. He fields it at about the seven. Hall still on his feet. Hall finally brought down by Lawrence Story. He may have run 25 yards, but only picked up 15 on the return. So with 9.30 left here in our first quarter, Jackson State has the lead 7-0. We'll have more right after this. Ah, uh, your dream home. <laughs> you thought it was too good to be true. And you were right. Honey, honey, wake up. The appraiser, remember? With HUD's FHA Home Buyer Protection Plan, you get the right loan, a fair price, and a thorough appraisal. If any problems are found, you'll know about them before you close. 30 million Americans have trusted us to build their dreams. Call for information on HUD Homes and FHA loans. HUD and FHA are on your side. Twix. It's all in the mix. Don't forget today's Southern Heritage Classic is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Log on for lowest fares at www.southwest.com, a symbol of e-freedom. George Johnson, Charles Mann, and Joe Claire here. Total yards, Jackson State, 82. Tennessee State still trying to get off the ground. Evans is still your quarterback. Pitches it back to Rob. Rob finds a little room. He's finally run out of bounds near the 29-yard line. But he picks up about eight yards on that carry. If you can pick up eight yards on first down, now your whole offense, your arsenal is available to you. And this is just a quick pitch. A couple of lead blockers. Good tackle. I mean, good uh, blocks by the offensive line there. As Amari Rob just finds the opening and runs for eight yards good solid pickup Evans play action overthrows his tight end Kevin Johnson who was wide oh, open wide open you put that ball down and he runs at least to midfield they really have to work out their quarterback situation here at Tennessee State last week Evans and Jermaine Smith the other quarterback combined for 10 of 26 for 131 yards. That's the lowest total since 1994 that Tennessee State has thrown for. So they would like to see their passing game pick it up a little bit more. Here's Rob running the football, gets the first down, takes it out by the 35 yard line. And Mariah Rob. I you know, think I have that right. Who turned an ankle against North Carolina A&T last week. It is slowed him down, but he seems to have gotten back. Yeah, this play is made possible by the fullback, number 41, Karan Key. Is that K-Ron? Karan <laughs> sure. Key. K-Ron Key. There you go. 
big old guy, 5'10", 230 pounds. I'd love to have him as my lead blocker. First and 10. Ball's at the 35-yard line, and it's incomplete. As again, Evans looking for Hall, and you can now, see a fa his face. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's looking like, you know, come on, run the pattern right, or come on, you, you're not doing something right. What's wrong is the quarterbacks, both quarterbacks on both sides of the football, they're throwing the balls high. That means they're rushing, they're not setting up and getting in a proper stance to throw the football forward. Second and 10. I formation with deep back is Rod. They give it inside to the fullback. And Brantley picks up maybe a half yard at best, which is forcing the Tigers into a third long situation. And the way they've thrown the football so far, as you say, this could also be an adventure. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been uh, quite interesting. They're going with five wide receivers set, and... In a five wide receiver set, a lot of times what's open is like the quarterback draw up the middle, some kind of a run where you spread the defense out. So this time he goes to his top receiver, Julius Hall, and Hall picks up a couple yards, but not nearly enough for a first down. And you're wondering right now if maybe he's so used to getting at the Hall that he's not looking at the other guys in, in the paddles. Well, down, down, I, you know, I would down. say right there that, you know, you need 10 yards and you throw a three-yard pass play with five wide receivers in there. It's like overkill, you know? <laughs> like the, the set was too qualified for the, for the uh, yardage that they picked up. Well, again, fourth down situation. And Johnson is again in the punt. End over end punt to a toy thick pin. Bounces at about the 18, and boy, it takes a great Tennessee State bounce inside the five yard line where Jackson State will start first and 10 from their two yard line. What a great punt. And great hustle play by Scott Cunningham to get down there and down that football. 59-yard punt. Great play, though, right here by Cunningham. Now, Thickman has to get out of the way of that. When you see that ball moving around like that, if it bumped his leg, the ball could have been advanced for a touchdown. You want to get out of the way. So here come the Tigers of Jackson State. Thank you. And they are deep in their own territory. Still that quarterback is Kent. Going to throw out of his own end zone. Going to throw deep. Looking downfield. And the pass was intended for Daniel Guy. Good coverage defensively back there. Legarius Jennings back there defensively. There was a lot of pressure. Jason Ingsminger uh, let his man get to the inside right here. Number 57, you see him coming to the inside. That's uh, Grayson. And that forced T.C. Taylor to step out and not really set up to throw that ball properly. And that could have been pass interference. A little hands all over each other. Could have went either way. But Darius Jennings, you do not want to throw to him. They say the pro scouts come out to practice every day to see that young man play. Great defensive play there. By the linebacker, Gar Holland, number 52. Handoff was to McLaurin, and he picked up a couple of yards and makes it third down and long now. Lauren is just big enough as a 215-pound uh, freshman that arm tackles aren't going to work, and that's how he was able to spring that first long run for a touchdown. Well, he picks up about three yards on that play, make it third down and seven. As Kent now goes into the shotgun, he's got Ducksworth back there as his lone setback. But he's throwing downfield, has a receiver wide open. Lawrence Story, Lawrence Story just, could not come down with it. He, he, he jumped for the ball. He jumped too early. You know? You ever got hung on the rim, George, when you get ready to try no, to slam? I've never gotten hung oh, on the okay. rim. All right. Well, well have you, let's see. Do I have any step stools back there? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> if you watch this, now it's a perfect throwing lane for TZ Taylor. He throws this ball up. And this ball could have been caught. He jumps just a little bit too early. As you see the couple of different replays, that would have been a very nice grab and a very nice first down. So Kent now will have to pump the football deep in his end zone oh. and gets rid of it. Ball, going to take it at about the 41-yard line, looking to get outside, still on his feet. He takes it down to about the 34. 
So a return of about seven yards on that play. Julius Hall and his club now in perfect position for some points. They can make something happen here offensively, but they really have struggled, Tennessee State. You see this ball, a lot of times when there's fumbles like that and miscues, the defense overruns you, and you see the game-saving tackle by B.J. Fletcher right there. Great run by Hall. So it'll be first and 10. The ball is at the 35-yard line for Evans, sending Toriano Morgan in motion and giving it to Rob. Big hole, and Rob slips and falls at about the 27-yard line. If he'd been able to stay on his feet, he'd picked up another three, four yards. The old eye set and cut back. When you're in the eye set like this, as we watch great camera angle right here, the flow is going one way, and Amari Rob turns and goes the other way. You're right, if he wouldn't have slipped and fell, he might have picked up four or five more yards. Rob is now joined by Brantley in the backfield as they go I formation. Evans going to throw the football. Had some protection. Now he's got problems. But he's gotten out of the pocket, on the run, and the pass is too high. It was intended for Carlo Thomas, the tight end. The boy, he did a pretty good job to elude the defenders as that pocket closed on him. Once again, you know, I don't realize, I don't think Ken Evans realized the pocket isn't closing on him right there. He could have sat back there another couple of seconds. He gets a little uh, hesitant and runs out of there. And right here, he would have done, it would have served him better just to throw that ball out of bounds. Tight end covered by two people and you throw it. Evans is now out of the football game and Jermaine Smith is now your quarterback. So now both coaches, who listed one quarterback at the top that we'd be looking for, mm -hmm. have dug into their pockets and brought out another quarterback. We talked about the fact that these two teams were struggling, trying to find something to turn this thing around, both coming off. We had a little line movement. Isaiah Hayward, number 77, was actually talking to John Dell Cooper trying to get the snap count. Like, what was that on? What was that on? And while he was doing that, um, <laughs> he, uh, all the defense had to do was step across the line and say they were jumped or pulled off. So that moves the football back five yards, making it third down and nine. So now we'll see if Jermaine Smith can get this offense moving for Tennessee State. Again, good pocket, Smith. And you wonder if Smith showed the patience that it takes to throw that football, wait for the receivers to get open, kind of pulled it down immediately, and he's dragged down after picking up about a yard. He had good reason to escape the pocket. If you look at the replay here, Leroy Matthews is coming around the corner here, got pulled down now that you didn't see that. But Edward Reese played, uh, we used to call it a spy, when Randall Cunningham with the Philadelphia Eagles back in the late 80s and 90s would uh, always be a running threat at quarterback. 49-yard field him. goal attempt by Seth Goodowens. <laughs> and nowhere near three. So Seth Goodowens, the junior, comes up a little short, you might say, on the 49-yard field goal attempt. You know what he said on the sideline. He's, he's telling his coach, please give me a shot. I can do this. I made it in practice. Well, Coach Reese says that every time he talked to Seth, he says, listen, anytime we get inside the 50, I want you to look my way. And he knew right when he kicked this thing, it wasn't even close. It doesn't even get over 20 feet up in the air. So with the missed field goal by Good Owens, Jackson State has the football out at the 32-yard line. Can't remain your quarterback. T.C. Taylor we haven't seen yet. Ducksworth finding a hole. Ducksworth still on his feet and takes it out to about the 41-yard line. Pickup of nine. Very nice move by Damian Ducksworth. Desmond Scantling, number 56, the outside linebacker, runs right by the play. As you see right there, he reaches out, tries to arm tackle Ducksworth. That's not going to happen. Best way to get him down is what Marcus Stevens did, Marquis Stevens, and that was grab his shoelaces and tie him real quick. 
Leading rusher on this football team is Ducksworth as we have movement in the trenches. Both teams pointing the other way. That was a very good pointer. <laughs> <laughs> Minute I jumped, I pointed to the other guy. You never know. The referees, you know, they don't you don't know what they see. That was uh, offsides by the defense, but you don't know what they're gonna call. The more I talk to you, the more I start to gain confidence in the officials of National Football League. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'd use that finger. In fact, there's a football card with me pointing, and I'm, I know I'm talking to, uh, to one of the referees. Look, I didn't do it. Let's get his call. Huh, so they're saying there was no, there was no offsides. I know, everybody was just dancing for no reason. So the <laughs> yeah, and Robert Kent wasted a play because he took a knee trying to get out of, you know, he thought he got the offsides. And from the looks of things, Jackson State suffers because it looks like the ball was moved back almost a half yard to a yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ball was marked at the 41, now it's back at the 40, making it third down and two. We've seen the offensive coordinator, John Carr, for Tennessee State going over the offense trying to hammer out some things, some fundamentals. Inside handoff to Ducksworth. Orlando Dotson, number 96, was the man there to make the tackle. And it looks like Ducksworth may have gotten enough for the first down. They are moving the chains. Ducksworth coming in. Averaging 61 yards per game, four yards a carry. But he's a fullback, so he's not going to get that breakaway touchdown run. Really, his longest run has been 14 yards this year. Four yards a carry, 4.4 yards a carry is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, here he is again, inside handoff, looking for more yards. And I know he got at least four on that one. Okay. <laughs> Very solid. This is the kind. What you want to do here is you want to just wear the defense down. And this stuff pays off in the second half. You see, wide open here on the draw. This play is designed and set up so you get the defensive ends to go upfield, and then it's left open. Watch as we see the second replay here. You get the ends to go upfield, which creates a natural opening between the guards. Walter Reese making the tackle number 40 and. Jumping off sides, Tennessee State, Desmond Scantling, who got the start in this football game, had been playing second team defensive end, but really has earned himself some time on the field, but that'll quickly get you off the field. A lot of De Desmond Scantling's effectiveness comes because he's quick, and he's quicker than the other player going backwards. He's quicker moving forward than the offensive lineman is moving backwards. And so you want to get the jump. And he's a stand-up defensive end. And a lot of times you can get the jump and have an easy sack. Here's McLaurin. Here's McLaurin. Here's McLaurin. Here's McLaurin. There's McLaurin. Nathan McLaurin already has a touchdown. <laughs> That covered 68 yards. And that one right there goes for 47. And what made this play happen and made it work? And I know McLaurin, he's a young guy, but I know he knows to go and, and shake the hands of his offensive line. But you know who made this go? Number 86, the tight end. And he wraps up the defensive end right there, just manhandled him and sprung McLaurin on the outside. And then he uses his speed. He's got wonderful speed. And he's just a freshman, folks. <laughs> more, yeah. more of him. We'll see a lot more of him. On to attempt the point after is Reynolds. And the kick is up, and he is jumping all over the place. <laughs> Brian Reynolds converts on his second PAT of the game. And thanks to Nathan McLaurin's 47-yard touchdown run, Jackson State leads this football game 14 to nothing. More coming next on BET right after this. Well, if you're a Jackson State fan, you're having all kinds of fun in this stadium. Then again, Joe Claire is not a fan of either. And he's having all kinds of fun. Down to you, Joe. Yo, it is off the hook down here. Now, you know.
know Tennessee State has won this game for the past two years in a row, so they're not used to being in this position. Over there, they are partying hard. It's like if you don't come to black football games, you don't understand how it is. But for those of you at home who know how it is, it's crunk. You make sure you keep the lock right here. We're in the middle of a good game. Back up to you, George. All right, thank you, Joe. So Brian Reynolds now will kick the football off. Back deep, will receive the kick. Julius Hall, Legarius Jennings, two top players for Tennessee State. And maybe, just maybe, it's these two guys that are going to have to create something, make something happen to pull the rest of the team on their back. Because Tennessee State needs some kind of fire, especially on the offensive side. Get that defense off the field. Here comes Hall, took it at the five, trying to get outside. And great coverage right there by Jackson State. Wayne Johnson is the man who came up and made the tackle. You can see five plays, 68 yards, culminating in a 47-yard touchdown run by Nathan McLaurin. And that's why Jackson State leads 14 to nothing. And they're doing it the right way. They're, supposedly, Jackson State's offense is a West Coast offense. Now, what is a West Coast offense? Well, <laughs> we're not seeing a West Coast offense. A West Coast offense gets it done through the air. Right. And this team today is surprising everybody, including Tennessee State, because they're getting it done on the ground. Are you surprised you haven't seen T.C. Taylor yet in this football game? No, I mean, we had him. He was in there in the first series. No, I'm not surprised. He has one TD and four interceptions. Robert Kent, though, only has a 14% completion rate, so, and one INT, so. So they'll keep it on the ground and keep giving it to Nathan and Dutch. It makes sense. <laughs> and already Tennessee State digging themselves deeper into a hole. You know, Tennessee State has had mental mistake after mental mistake in their first two games. 18 penalties in the first two wow. games, and you see already today, they have two. Well, that was delay of game charged as they go deep, and it looked like Julius Hall had a chance to make that catch and just couldn't bring it in. <laughs> he had a chance to make a easier catch than what he tried to do. Trying to catch the ball as you're looking over your outside shoulder is awful tough. Now, this is a pretty good throw by Jermaine Smith right here. He sets up, heaves this thing down the field, throws it to the outside where only Julius Hall will have a shot at it, and he tried to catch it over his shoulder. Looks like he got away with a little push-off, too, on Kenny Bryant. Oh, everybody does it. <laughs> yeah, they all, Michael Irvin, Art Monk, Jerry Wright, they all give you a little shove as they're getting into their break. Once again, you're working on my confidence in the officials. Here we go, second down and 15. Going downfield, and his pass was intended for Andy Durge. And that should have been picked off by Cecil Forbes, number 38. Great play on the ball. But you know what? The Redskins defensive people would have been upset with him for not making that catch. Now, you know, you only have so many opportunities at turnovers, and that was a great opportunity for Cecil Forbes right there as he makes the play on the ball and actually gets bumped. He gets bumped by Durage. Durage. But they were both going for the ball, so. And that's Andy Durage. Andy, right, the freshman. Not Andre. Third down. So far this year, Tennessee State has converted on 13% of their third down, but they get one right here. That's Donnell Brantley. He's still on his feet. Donnell Brantley taking it out the midfield. He is in Jackson State territory. Throw a flag in and tap on some more yards. Jermaine Smith pass. Well, I'm not sure if the flag is going to tack on more yards or if that's going to be a face mask. Well, you tackle on some more yards after the play then, right? Well, I mean, an offensive face mask. Ah. Now, I'm not sure. Now, I'm not sure. But Donnell Brantley. It is against Jackson State. 15 yards. 43-yard pickup right here. And Donnell Brantley, not a lot of speed. But you don't want to tackle him, do you? What a great play and move right here. Just throw the ball up. To Donnell Brantley. Watch this. It's almost like a pitch. It wasn't a pitch. He threw it, flicked his wrist real quick, and Donnell Brantley is looking for open space and knows what to do with the football. You get 230 pounds coming your way. <laughs> he starts thinking twice about that. So 230 pounds of steam, too, coming at you. He was moving. 
Finally dragged out of bounds by Kenny Bryant. All 185 pounds of him. But after the penalty, now the ball is down inside the 30-yard line, marked at the 27. And so far, you know, in this short period of time, Jermaine Smith looks a little bit more comfortable in the pocket than Ken Evans did when he was in there. Here's Rob. Rob trying to... Oh, Rob uh, is hello. Met. By Rob Mr. Is met. Reese. <laughs> Edward Reese coming up and making the tackle. Maybe, might be the... In fact, might be the best linebacker in the swack ever Reese. Uh, that's what everybody talks about when they talk about this kid right here. And this is how you make a textbook tackle. And you don't stop. As you see number 56 in white right there following down the line of scrimmage. That's what a middle linebacker does. And then just unloads, unloads his every, all of, everything he had on Amira Rob. And that's how you get it done. Rob picked up yards on the play. Second and eight. Boy, here come the big boys. Vernon Young and Reese <laughs> trying to make life miserable for Jermaine Smith. Vernon Young. Don't you like the way he looks in a uniform? Number 93, Vernon Young right there. Just 310 big pounds. Big boy, he's got a sack, too. <laughs> got a sack for the season. In fact, we looked in the uh, in the stats, and we didn't see any sacks for Jackson State. We're wondering. You talk yes. to the coach, and he says, hey, let's get this thing straight. We had two sacks. <laughs> but considering the fact that last year they had they had 53 last year. Right. That was a school record. So you're right. expecting them to get some pressure to see two sacks after two games. Not the same. Hold it. On the defense. Okay, he called that on the defense and the offense, but he was pointing towards the offense. I believe it was offensive holding, and it was declined. So that'll make it third down. And again, as I said before, the third, the last third down situation, they had completed just 12% of their third downs. They got to pick that up. They were 3 of 24 for third downs coming into the game, Tennessee State. And here's Smith, bobbling, getting away from some tacklers. And getting out of bounds. I don't know how he hit. got, I don't know how he got uh, away from Marcus Greer there. Had him right in his mitts. Michael this Carraway. Kid, I'm sorry, Excuse go, me, go ahead. This kid is pretty athletic. I, li I like what I'm seeing in Jermaine Smith. He's a playmaker. He makes things happen. He's a junior from Darlington, South Carolina. So now Seth Goodowens gets his chance again to redeem himself after that last miss kick. Ball will be spotted about the 33, making it a 43-yard attempt. They are having some problems. And they are having a lot of problems with the snap. And Jackson State had that ball. In fact, I think Jackson State recovered the fumble. Gets away. Yes. Ball is yeah, recovered. No, Brantley. And Brantley has... Actually, no, that's no... That, that's not Brantley. I'm that's sorry. Mario Mouton. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's all right. Like, like, there's a fullback. I mean, the running back doing out there. Fullback doing out there. They're both Tigers. They both wear 32. And that one just got through the hands of Ashley Johnson. Went right through his hands. It didn't concentrate on catching that ball. Now, if you've ever been in that situation and, and had to catch a ball like that, it is pretty tough. You're thinking about what you're going to do. You want to get the ball down quickly enough. And a lot of times, you, you don't take care of the first thing you need to do. First and 10 from the 44, McLaurin. And this time, a nice defensive play made for Tennessee State by Shanae Price coming up to make the tackle. The only thing I'd like to see McLaurin do on plays like that when he's running one way, put the ball in the outside hand and get fumbles like that all the time. There's Jermaine Smith on the side talking to the coaches. Smith is just one of four, but that one completion went for 43 yards. So we've come to the end of the first quarter. And Jackson State has the lead 14 to nothing. Second quarter action coming up next right after this. Ben, we're coming. Here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. We're, yeah, just doing our thing. So is Joe Claire standing by down on the field. Uh, I, have a, I have a quick report on uh, Cecil Falls, number 28, over there. For uh, He got hurt. He got hurt. He has an ankle injury. It's questionable if he's going to come back. I'm here with the Tennessee State Tigers. Hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, can you give a shout, give a shout out to somebody right now? What's up, man? 
That's for that's for my pops who used to play for the Tennessee State Marching Band. We see you, pops. Back to y'all, George. <laughs> Just a little shout out going on down there. By the way, Cecil Forbes, the defensive back for Jackson State. And there was question as to whether he was even going to play in this anyway, ball game. Yeah. And so now he suffers the injury. Mario Mooton has been playing in that position. First, actually second and 10 in Jackson State. Getting it to the, their big play man, Daniel Guy. As we take a look now at our first quarter stats, Jackson State only the advantage in the first downs. Tennessee State gets that one big play to Donnell Brantley. Rushing yards, though, thanks in large part to the play of Nathan McLaurin. And that's the glaring thing as you look at that. It's just the rushing yards. That's the difference. That's the 14-point difference. McLaurin with 127 of those yards. And Kent's pass is incomplete. I'm not sure we're not going to see T.C. Taylor back in here uh, before too long. Well, one thing we need to keep in mind, and Coach was talking to me yesterday, was the fact that he thought T.C. last year was so effective because he came off the bench. He yes. felt more comfortable coming off the bench, right. coming in for Mark. So maybe he's thinking right now, maybe what I'll do is I'll let T.C. see what's going on out here on the field and then bring him in and maybe get a different result from him. And, and I understand that very well. You know, you, you have pregame meals for the players, the guys who are going to play on the field, and then you have pregame meals for the guys who are going to be standing on the sidelines. <laughs> Guess who eats more? <laughs> the guys standing on the sidelines don't have to worry about anything, okay? They just eat. And so you get relaxed and you get comfortable. Next yeah. thing you know, you run out and you have to play, and you're not all uptight. Kent punting to Hall. Hall's going to let this one bounce. Finally downed at about the 17. They're going to actually walk it out to the 19-yard line. The Tennessee State trailing 14 to nothing. will take over first and 10. That's a good play by Keith Fawcett to stop that ball from coming back any further. 31-yard punt for Kent. And so here comes Tennessee State. And we're running the football for about 183 yards per game, which is a lot better than they ran the football last year. But considering the fact that they returned almost all their running backs, you would expect their running game to be tough. Ken Evans now is back into the football game at quarterback. See if he can turn some things around. Inside handoff. No, he does with fake it. Holding on to the football. That is so old. You get so mad as a defensive end, Marcus Greer, number 96. You have a sack, you're eyeballing a sack, <laughs> and you can't seem to reel him in. Flag came down after Evans went down to the turf. So face mask moves the ball five yards further, and they get the first down. And number 96 you fakes out our cameraman there too as well as numbers 96 Marcus Greer who ran upfield looked downfield to see who had the ball and realized the quarterback had it and Elgin Andrews is the man who got the hand on the face mask here's Rob got the ball stripped away from him but he may have fallen back on it that was Edward Reese again that middle linebacker he's got that middle you're not going to get any if you're going to run the football we're Tennessee has had the success is running it on the edge and watch number 56 in the middle of the screen right there comes up and explodes into Rob and then rips at the football and Rob does a smart thing and lands right back on it so see a heads up play by Edward Reese the linebacker middle linebacker he's thinking get the football make a big play with a turnover second and ten and Evans going deep pass was intended for Dorje could not get to it makes it third down you go back to Edward Reese number 56 he's already been named SWAC defensive player of the week as Evans struggles just one of six throwing the football but back to Reese who was already the SWAC defensive player of the week after his performance against Howard came up with several tackles also had an interception for a touchdown and Reese could be considered the best defensive player in the conference and if he continues to play the way he's played so far early on in the season he may get the nod Always, always wonder what it'd be like to play middle linebacker. Sit in there, get the roam, 
He's got to come up and make the hits, though. We're waiting for some call, maybe no call. I don't see any flags on the field, so it'll be third down and 10. Ball is at the 29-yard line for Tennessee State. You saw Evans struggling. James Reese, the head coach of Tennessee State, says we've got to pick up this completion percentage. Evans throws. Ball's complete this time to Hall. Hall forced out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down out by about the 45-yard line. And that set right there, that was four wide receivers. It was trips right, meaning three wide receivers to the right side, and Julius Hall on the left side all by himself. He gets one-on-one -on -one coverage right here, and Hall makes a nice move to get free. And look at the space and the separation that he had. Mario Mouton gives him all kinds of room to catch the football. Remember, Cecil Forbes, who's the starting cornerback, is now out, Joe Claire reported for us. And here's Evans. Evans has got some room if he wants to hold on to it. But he takes a shot right there by Kenny Bryant. A couple of yards shy of a first down. And, and, and it's funny, uh, Kenton Evans gets up talking stuff to Kenny Bryant. Kenny, you better watch out, Kenny Bryant is a stud. <laughs> Kenny Bryant last week had, what, three block kicks? Yes, he did. And a safety? He's been making some great plays this year. Look at that. He throws a forearm in there. <laughs> he didn't wrap up, but you know what? With a quarterback, you don't have to wrap up. Just throw that little elbow in there. Bryant, the lone returning starter from a year ago in the secondary. So here we are, second down. Had a snap Another problem there. Up. The ball, the quarterback, that's always the quarterback's fault when he doesn't get the snap. And they're calling it a false start. False start on the center. Maybe the center snapped it to nobody else moved. Or, but I don't know if they had settled who actually had the loose ball, so that's probably a break for Tennessee State. Oh, yes, it is. Even though... See, Kenton Evans never even gets the ball. He's looking down the field. You know, you don't have to look underneath the center. You know where the ball is going to go. It's going to go into your open hands. And Artis Johnson had fallen on that football. So they'll take the penalty in the five-yard back, going backwards so that they can retain possession. Second down and nine. Evans going up top to Hall. And a good defensive play that time by Mario Boot. He was not going to let Hall get out of his sights. Nice play. Well, you're wondering, as you see Julius Hall, is he frustrated? Is this a guy who is waiting? Of course, Leon Murray was his quarterback last year right. before moving on to the Redskins. Leon, one of the top quarterbacks in all the OVC. In fact, one of the top players in the Ohio Valley Conference last year. But he doesn't have that same guy throwing him the football. Right, the receiver's only as good as the quarterback throwing to him. But once again, we have four wide receivers. We have trips to one side. And somebody ran the wrong route, and that's an interception. Pass was intended for Toriano Morgan, but it was intercepted by Vince Davis, the sophomore from Sturgis, Mississippi. And that's his second interception of the year. That ball was just not thrown. That was an ill-advised pass. In fact, he doesn't, uh, it was a mix-up. He's thinking one place, and the wide receiver goes to another. He's running an out pattern, ends up turning up because he sees the ball going further down the football field. And I got to tell you, it looked like he had all kinds of time. The offensive line looked like they did a great job on that third down play. So there's Kenton Evans, really struggling. First and 10, though, for Jackson State after the interception. And look at <laughs> just straight ahead running that time. Bulldozing. That's, that's one of the advantages of having your leading rusher as the fullback, Damian Ducksworth, as he just kind of barrels ahead. 11.30 left here in our first half and counting. 14 to nothing is your score, Jackson State. Three yard pickup for Ducksworth. And this young man right here has been the quarterback the whole first half, Robert Kent. <laughs> Talk to one of the, 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 the spokespeople from Jackson State, and they'll say, the folks out there, they all wanted Robert Kent to play quarterback, but then they wanted T.C. Taylor to play when Mark Washington was the quarterback. They wanted Mark Washington to play when Graylin Pratt was the quarterback. Always happens. We'll have more after this. 
attention of today's game has been brought to you by AutoZone. The more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. 11-10 left here in our first half. And Jackson State scored their two touchdowns in the first quarter. Nathan McGorn with both of them. One from 68 yards out with a run, and then he ran one in from 47 yards out. Because of that, that's why they need 14 to nothing, and they have the football. Nathan McLaurin, the human highlight film. Second down. Seven yards to go for a first. And now Kent will roll to his left. Got a good block out there. Finally forced out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Yeah. You've got a player still on the ground yeah, after that block. Kendrick Travis comes back and just unloads and then had enough nerve to go down and say, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, you got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be all right. You know Sinead Price has been talking a whole lot of stuff out there. Watch the this. And you just, all you saw was it coming into the screen at the last second. Here we go. This better angle right here. You'll see it. Number 86 is going to come in flat. There he goes. <laughs> you see the body rolling out of the screen there. And we have one more camera angle. Let's see if we can see it right here. There it goes, right there. Wow. Kendrick Travis, the tight end, puts a nice block. Meanwhile, Craig B.J. Fletcher with the pursuit, the linebacker, who got a late start. Wasn't told he wasn't going to, was going to start this football game until yesterday. Mm -hmm. And yet he's been very active in the football game as Shanae Price. And yes, we are pronouncing that correctly. Shanae Price, not Shane, Chain. Always around the football is Mr. Price. Been a ball hawk since game one of the season. Third down situation. So they give it to McLaurin inside, oh, yeah. and McLaurin yeah, had the ball knocked out as Antonio Jones came up and made the pop. And this is exactly what Tennessee State needs. They don't want to go in the halftime down 14 to nothing. You got to get a turnover. And right underneath the pile, everybody's fighting for the football, and that's what happens. Referees won't make the call until they see somebody come up with the football. Looks like it's still going to be Jackson State's football. You see it. Great hit right there. Damian Duxworth is able to get the football back. <laughs> I think that was uh, number 28, Ahmed Safahula, that makes the stick. Ahmed, just a freshman from Decatur, Georgia. So oh, again, we're going to have kick. roughing the kicker, the quarterback. There's a flag. Well, quarterback, kicker, same person. <laughs> Paul but will they the call it catch. roughing the quarterback or will they call it roughing the kicker? They can call it either way. It's roughing still... Mr. Kent. <laughs> now, if, if we can get a replay, I don't know if we're going to see a replay of this or not. Let's hear what the referee says. I know it's roughing the kicker. What a big turnover. Look, and we do have a replay. What happened is Robert Kent took his sweet time punting this football. He's a little slow here. He almost got that blocked. I mean, he, uh, that was legitimately almost blocked. Corey Green. By Corey Green, yeah, the safety. But because of the penalty, the ball is now moved inside Tennessee State territory at the 45-yard line. So a costly penalty with 10 minutes left here in the second quarter and now they're asking the bands to quit playing huh. never quite understood how you can come to a college football game and not expect the bands and, to play and ask for no noise <laughs> you want noise and the band complies it's not the first time they've been asked to be quiet by the way folks i guess that's our cue for promoing that the bands will be coming your way we will not keep them quiet we promise you at halftime Jackson State going with four wides. First and ten. Pass is overthrown, intended for Lawrence Story. I'm not sure if Robert Kent has put a ball down in somebody's bread basket right in their gut today. All his passes have been a little bit high. He's 0 for 6. 
So he hasn't completed any passes. Good thing that his buddy Nathan McLaurin has huh. brought his A game. Come on, come there, right? You haven't heard from that guy right there. there. Guy this He's from Memphis. He's looking to have a big game from the folks. Can't. Under a lot of pressure, gets rid of it. Great pressure by B.J. Fletcher, who we talked about earlier, and just about how active he's been so far. And look at this, B.J. Fletcher comes off the corner here. He's unblocked. And Kent couldn't understand why he was unblocked. He's supposed to get that sack now. You you run unblocked. Good play, though. Fletcher is just one of those all-around athletes. I mean, in high school, he played every position they asked him. Fullback, tight end. Also played center. And now linebacker. This one's thrown down. Field and caught by Lawrence Story. Touchdown, Jackson State. Just like that. He, we said he hadn't completed the pass. We said he was throwing them high. Well, he needed to throw that one high for Lawrence Story to go up and get it. And on that play, on that play, Tennessee State's defense was blitzing. So you had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the end, and Kent saw the, the defense was coming and knew he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Throws this ball up high this time where Lawrence Story could get it. Only Lawrence Story could get to it. And Lawrence Story scores his first touchdown of the season. That's his fifth reception of the year. Jackson State is making this look Awful, awful easy. So Reynolds will attempt the point after, and it's he... the crossbar. And there's not a lot of jumping going on right now. This is the third time he's hit a crossbar this season. 9.41 left here in the first half. The story is all Jackson State, though. They're up 20 to nothing. You get a good look at Lawrence Story, the junior from Birmingham, Alabama, who caught the first ball of the day for Jackson State, and it goes 45 yards for a touchdown. His mama gonna be mad at him. He's gonna take his helmet off. <laughs> take his helmet off, let everybody see him. And this place is starting to pack, pack up here at the Liberty Bowl, where every year they get 40,000 folks plus. Isn't this a good football night? Great it's, night. it's a little cool. It's probably in, a, in the low 60s, 63, 64 degrees. Very comfortable. Great football weather. Michael Durden is back deep to receive the kick, along with this guy right here, Julius Hall. Hall dragged down and didn't pick up many yards after he ran into Patrick Cooper. You know, that man is very upset. Not Patrick Jenkins there. But Julius Hall. Yeah. He wants to make something happen. He's from Memphis here. He's got probably got several people in the stands. He's following his wedge. He's, he got away from the wedge. He was following the wedge right up the gut there and then decides to go on his own. That's what happens when you leave your protection. And again, going back to the original question I asked you about being frustrated. If you're a big-time player and you're on a team where you don't see some of the other guys pulling their weight, frustration starts to set in, and it affects your game. Handoff this time goes to big fullback Donnell Brantley. Brantley picks up about three on the carry. Well, the thing for Tennessee State to do is to not panic. You're down three touchdowns, three touchdowns, and you're, and you're back in this. In fact, you're, you're winning if you make the extra points. It's, they've got a whole second half to play and nine minutes in this half, so. But here's Brantley again, eluding a couple of tacklers. Finally dragged down at about the 25-yard line. Reese at the bottom of that pile, as well as Elgin Andrews. Makes it third down and four. Kent Nevins says you get a good look at him. He was Mr. Football in the state of Tennessee back when he was in high school. Mm -hmm. Then went to the University of Memphis and played two years. Now here at Tennessee State. And looking for Julius Hall. And the pass was incomplete. 
This portion of today's game is brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Also brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. 8.21 left here. In our first half, Jackson State leads 20 to nothing. George Johnson along with Charles Mann and Joe Claire. And Tennessee State in a punting situation. And Ashley Johnson again will punt the football. Oh, no hang time at all on this ball. And it's finally downed inside the 40, but not much of a punt there. 37-yard punt, thanks to a good bounce for Ashley Johnson. But with 8-10 left, Jackson State has the lead and has the football. Back here at the Liberty Bowl, where Jackson State is in control, also in control, is Joe Claire standing by on the sideline. Joe. So you can hear these, click, these players talk uh, uh, stuff to each other. Hey, man, it's getting heated there on this field. Jackson State is running this game. Tennessee State swear they are about to come back. Y'all stay tuned. It's about to be off the hook. All right, Joe. You know, it's interesting he says that because now you were out on the field. But I remember when I first started covering Redskins Report back in the day and working with Bobby Mitchell and just having a great time. Right. By the way, hi, Bobby. Uh, just standing on the sideline and watching you guys play, that was a whole new world. It is a whole new world for the fan who doesn't realize just how fast and how hard you hit. An there. interception right there. And that's what Tennessee State needed. Robert Kent again throws the ball high. He's thrown every ball high except the touchdown pass. And Sinead Price, who had to leave the football game after getting his bell run, did finally get back and gets the last laugh as he makes the interception. For Price, that's his second interception of the season. As we look at this on the replay now, once again, it's just not proper quarterback mechanics in throwing the ball, releasing the football. Now keep in mind, Lauren's story is 6'5". So and if you can if throw can, it over 6'5", <laughs> man, yeah. It's high. Here's Evans. Evans immediately going downfield, and, it's oh. up, and it almost goes back in the Hall's hands. Unbelievable play right there. That, that defensively amazing. was Xavier Denson, who got a hand on it, but then almost knocked it right back to Hall. Xavier Denson is, he's, when he sees the tapes of this, he should have made that play. He knows he should have made that play. I like what Tennessee State was trying to do there. They're trying to get a quick strike and get some momentum back in this game. They have four wide receivers right now. Kenton Evans, who has completed just two of 11 passes, going back in the air. This one to Toriano Morgan. But Mouton came over and says, hey, I hope you weren't looking for Cecil Forbes because I'm now over here and doing a good job. The best, what happens here is Mouton gets a good break because he was covering another receiver and comes off of that receiver when he sees the ball in the air and just makes a nice, nice stick. Mouton, a transfer from Alcorn State. So he was already in the SWAC and then came over to Jackson State. Coach Hughes said, I heard he was on campus. I just didn't know it. <laughs> Pass this time is complete to C.J. Johnson, the true freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. And that'll be enough for a first down. Takes that one out near midfield. 16-yard pickup on the play. And there's C.J. Getting open over the middle. They were in zone coverage, and C.J. just got in the little seam. Evans again completes another pass. Keep one thing in mind, folks. In last week's loss, Ken Evans opened up the game 0 for 4. But before it was all said and done, completed six of his last eight passes. So Evans might be the kind of quarterback that just needs to get warmed up. Well, Andy Durge, number 37, does a great job of coming back for that football, and that's why that football was caught. He helped his, uh, his quarterback out by coming back to it. 
Six and a half minutes left here in the first half. Evans had the ball almost stripped away. M Marcus Greer still looking for that first sack of the day. <laughs> he's had one, he's had a quarterback in his hands that he didn't get. Another time he looked like a blind dog in a meat house. Didn't know who had the football. Neither did our cameraman at that time. And this time and he has a chance right there to get the sack, but there was about five people on that. Also credit Edward Reese, who again got a hand on that football and caused that minus five yard play. Here's Br and Brantley says, hey, you wanna go head to head? Let's go head to head as he comes into Elgin Andrews. Knocked out of bounds after a pickup of about three yards on the play. That'll make it third down and 12. And then that was, that was an option play and again, Maurice Greer, he has the quarterback. He had to make sure the ball is pitched. So he once again grabs the quarterback, hoping that the quarterback has the football. Give Brantley five yards on that play. So here we are now, third down and 10. Evans, and Evans, nothing doing. Mm. As he's brought That's down. That's number three for Vernon. Vernon Young, and Raheem Hammock also in on the play, number 91. Both of them seniors. Vernon Young is spending no time standing out there celebrating. He's running off, getting off the sideline. Big number 93 up the gut. Watch this. Nice hit. Keep in mind, this team allowed five sacks. Talking about that offensive line last week. As here comes Guy on the punt return. Taking it out to about the 17-yard line. That was actually... Today's trivia question, it's time for our trivia question, is brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. And which team has the most wins in the Southern Heritage Classic? Grambling, Mississippi Valley State, Jackson State, or Tennessee State? Now, are you asking me that? I'm asking you that. And that is our McDonald's trivia question. We'll have the answer for you coming your way on the other side of this commercial break. 5-10 left here in the first half. Jackson State has a sizable lead and also has the football. By the way, here's our trivia question brought to you by McDonald's. We'd love to see you smile. Which team has the most wins in the Southern Heritage Classic? Guess? I think it's Jackson State. Hey! Oh, look at you right on the mark, Jackson State. And I didn't have any help. I just did my homework. Oh, That's all. And you looked at me as if to say, where's your homework? No, at? I know you did four, yours. I hear you. For, four wins for Jackson State. Don't forget today's trivia question and answer has been brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. And they, and they are, are the smiling. Smiles. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, they are. With that nook and it, look at a little past you. <laughs> See, that's spoken from a daddy yeah. calling yeah. it a oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's McLaurin on first and ten. And he has done a real good job maintaining his balance there. Picked up a couple of extra yards on the carry. Picked up close to seven, eight yards. I think Jackson State is saying to themselves, let's eat up these five minutes by keeping the ball on the ground. We got away from that a little bit. Let's put the ball back down on the, on the ground and march down the football field. High formation behind Kent. He's been your quarterback all half. And they try to find Daniel Guy. And Legarius Jennings was there defensively to knock the football down. Did they not hear me? This portion of today's game is brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Must be a whole lot of burgers going on down there in the stadium. <laughs> All these folks having a good time. As they now start to do the wave in the Liberty Bowl. They always have a good time at the <laughs> Southern Heritage Classic. 11th season. This game played at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. And like Charles commented earlier, I mean, it has just been a gorgeous day. I mean, you can mm. see for miles. And they, that fought, the foul was called after the play. There was a little pushing and shoving going on after the play. And Jackson State 
hurt themselves and put themselves in a hole. You know, I still say that Jackson State right now with under five minutes to go till half would be smart if they would keep the ball on the ground, eat up the clock, and go into the halftime up 20 points. But they're thrown again. This one was intended for Tory Thigpen. Great coverage over there. There were three Tennessee State Tigers, but like you said, the clock stops before 48 left. Here. I don't, I don't, I don't understand this. I don't see Robert Kent has not done enough in the air to impress me. Okay, and you're backed up. You got the lead. Eat the clock up. Get into the halftime. Regroup and come on back out. As it stands now, after that third down play, they're gonna have to punt the football. Kent back in his own end zone. And boy, here came the pressure. He went down. Now he was hit, and the referee threw that ball, I mean, threw that flag very late. He was debating whether to call it. I'm telling you, I don't know if this is planned or what, but what we're seeing right here. And that was running, running into the kicker. But it's only a five-yard penalty. Right. So that won't give them a first down. He is waiting awful long to kick that ball. There were four guys, four Tennessee State players right there waiting to block this punt. So that makes it now fourth down and 12. Excuse me, Charles. Yeah, well, he'll, just, he'll get a little bit more room to kick the football. I don't know if I want my quarterback with his leg all up in the air and guys coming after him. My starting quarterback, that is. Carlos Wright is back deep to receive the punt. He's standing at the 42-yard line. He got that one. He got his leg He's into that one. a chance to return this one. Carlos makes a move and takes it out past midfield. He's brought down by Keith Williams, so it'll be first and 10, Tennessee State. They've got four minutes and 25 seconds left here to try to mount some kind of drive. We'll see if they can do so right after this. The portion of today's game is brought to you by AutoZone, the more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And with that, we take you to our AutoZone take charge play of the game. And for that, we do a little Shanene. Shanene, or let's just say Shanae Price. <laughs> With the interception right here, one of two INTs in the game for Shanae Price. Today's Take Charge play has been brought to you by AutoZone. The more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America, AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. 425 left here in the second quarter. Charles Mann just had a two-tall Jones sighting, the former Tennessee State Tiger. That's Kent Nevins on first down, getting away from pressure, still on his feet inside the 25-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Elgin Andrews, but not before he picked up big yards on that play. Taking it inside the 25-yard line. And this is what I'm talking about. Jackson State had an opportunity to hold on to the football they're going to let this team, this young Tennessee State team, get back in it. Kenton Evans with a nice move, shows some nice speed. He was running to get out of bounds and stumbles before he gets out of bounds. And Elgin Andrews makes him pay. 28-yard pickup, though, for Evans. 4-14 left here in the first half. Evans looking into the end zone. Pass was intended for Durge. Good coverage back there defensively for Jackson State. Zach Grady, the strong side linebacker, came around the corner and almost unloaded everything <laughs> he had on Kenton Evans. Kenton Evans, though, is not even concerned about the hit he just took. He's trying to get his receiver to run the right route. Well, I've seen a lot of flags go down and this has been a very no recourse whatsoever, but that pass was not catchable. Yeah, it's just been a kind of a sloppy game in terms of the play, not not the referees. The referees got to make up their mind and be a little bit more assertive, but I'm talking about more of miscues and mistakes. Second and 10, ball at the 21. 
Evans again getting a lot of pressure. Lofting this one up into the end zone. And the pass is intercepted by Xavier Denson. Great play by Denson. I was surprised, though, George, that we didn't see a flag. There was some hand checking going on. The referee looked dead at it and decided not to make a call. As you see this replay, you know who made him throw that ball was Zach Grady, the outside linebacker. See the bumping right there? Before they went up in the air, there's a hand. You see Xavier Denson's hand is sitting right on Julius Hall, making sure that he couldn't jump for the football. So this team coming into this game, I'm sorry, Jackson State's team coming into this game had five interceptions. Denson also the second leading tackler on this defense. So picking up his second intercept or his first interception to go along with the fumble recovery he had earlier in the season. And the fact that he will hit you. Got a pretty good safety back there in Xavier Denson. And now Jackson State's offense is doing what I said they should have done in the last series, and that is keep the ball on the ground and eat up this 3.30 clock. The clock is at 325 and counting right now. Uh-oh, look at the bands. <laughs> the bands are moving into position. Yes, indeed. The show is on its way. Here's Ducksworth trying to get to the outside and nothing uh -huh. doing. Great play by Curly Grayson, the junior from Memphis. As he got a hold of that shirt, he said, you're coming with me. Corralling. The big fullback, as you can and see. The band, look at him. The calm before the storm. <laughs> and that's that sonic boom of the South getting ready to do their thing from Jackson State. Curly, I'm sorry, Curly Grayson reminds me of Ricky Jackson. Remember Ricky Jackson played for, about, know, played for New Orleans Saints. Mm -hmm. and before that, played. Now that's not because he's wearing 57, is it? No, he just. I like. Okay. I like what I'm seeing in him, and he reminds me of. How, who did Ricky play college ball with? Pass over the middle. Great defensive play by Legarius Jennings. We already had our trivia question. Oh, okay, so I can't throw it back. Okay. No. Let's go. University of Pittsburgh. Play defensive oh. end on the oh, other side. The other defensive end on the other side was Hugh Green. Hugh Green. He had a long seat, uh, career with the Miami Dolphins. Played with them. Not as long as Ricky's career. Look, look at this. Uh, and this ball was a much, be much better thrown football right there. To Tory Thigpen, and just great defensive play to tip that ball. Jennings has shown some flashes of being a really good cornerback, one who can play, oh. play on Sundays next year. As Look Kent this punch the football. Oh. And we do have the opportunity for a return. Bringing it back the other way was Carlos Wright. Wright picks up about eight yards on the return. And that's where it stands. We still have 212 left here. In the first half, Jackson State leads by 20. The Southern Heritage Classic is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Log on to Southwest Airlines, www.southwest.com for the lowest fares. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. Coming up, our halftime report also brought to you by Southwest Airlines. As we update you on the first half actions and also give you a pretty nice peek at both bands. So here's Tennessee State. They trail 20 to nothing. And Amariah, Rob with the carry. About a seven-yard pickup for Rob. The senior from Gallatin, Texas. George Johnson along with Charles Mann. Joe Clare is on the sidelines for us. As you get a look at Kent Nevins. Nevins has struggled here in the first half, including just five of 16 passes, including two interceptions. He's thrown for 49 yards, Charles. Oh, my God. Did okay. you see what just happened? Dunks this one, though. Nice. For Brantley. And Brantley is tripped up, but not before he picks up the first down. His best pass is that little lob pass. And both times, it, I mean, it's just as effective the last time he threw it earlier in the first quarter. Vernon Young runs right past the quarterback. 
Ooh, there goes Donnell Brantley. A nice pickup. Moten with the tackle. First and ten. We've got a receiver totally out of bounds, and that Julius Hall's looking for the interference. And there should be one. There should be a flag. It came in late. Mario Mooton pushes the receiver out of, shoves him out of bounds. We had a flag thrown. Well, the ball was in the air. The flag is thrown. It didn't have any velocity on it, so it's right around the 22-yard line. The flag is sitting near the sideline. Well, but if you look at that Tennessee State coaching staff, they were also in danger of having a penalty thrown on them. Well, they, they were, were wondering why. to those officials. Well, they were wondering why nothing had been called. There's the, the, the flag pass interference. And James Reese is still very upset, the head coach. What I don't, what, as you see the replay here, Evans keeps his eye on his receiver the whole time. You see that shove? That happened while the ball was in the air as you see the ball going overhead. You cannot do that, folks. you got to give that receiver a chance to make a play on the ball, or you make a play on the ball. So the ball's on the 27-yard line, first and 10. Rob, cut back. Rob still on his feet. Denson makes the tackle. And Amarai Mock, Rob. He's close to another first down. Watch Vernon Young, number 93. He's 310 pounds. You see him miss a tackle right there? He missed that tackle and gives Rob a chance to cut back and pick up some extra yards. Denson picks up nine yards on the play, so that'll make it second down and one. 53 seconds left here in the first half. And Tennessee State came in one and one. As everybody's getting ready for halftime. And the whole defense of Jackson State has gone over to talk to defensive coordinator Robert Kelly. See if they can find out what they need to do to keep Tennessee State off the board before halftime. This is, if Tennessee State scores here, this would be a great momentum swing for them. So going in with a goose egg, they could at least put something on the board. It is not going to get any easier for Tennessee State. I mean, they've got to start making some adjustments. After Jackson State, they take on the number one team in all of black college football in Florida A&M next week, the Atlanta Football Classic. And then it's Eastern Illinois as they start their schedule in the Ohio Valley Conference. And you've got a feeling that all the members of the OCC are going to be gunning for this team of after they going 11-0 last year during the regular season. And willing, winning the Ohio Valley Conference champion two years ago as well. So here we go, second down and short. Pass is caught by Hall. And that was a nicely thrown football. Very ball. nice. Very nice. That's a quick slant. You, the defensive back has got to keep the receiver from making the inside move. 13-yard pickup on that play. Clock, though, still running. We're under 40 seconds left here in the first half. Oh, the fake. And they give it to Rob, and, and he goes in for the touchdown. And I got to tell you, Kent Nevins, he ran that fake to perfection. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Charles, that's what they needed to take in the half. Get a little celebration here. Folks wanted to see a, at least a competitive game. That right there is a draw, folks. And you see the quarterback acting as the ball, like the ball went over his head. And that freezes everybody running upfield trying to get the fumble while Rob runs in the end zone practically untouched. For a five-yard touchdown. And now Seth Gilmans will attempt the point after and bring the team within 13 points. And another bad snap. We have seen more bad snaps in special team situations tonight than we've seen in a while. This is, this is incredible, and, and, and Good Owens is a very solid kicker. He's five for seven on point afters, and he's two for three on field goals, and he's kicked a 48-yarder. So, I mean, he's pretty solid, but I don't know what's going on. Well, Seth never got a chance in that one because, once again, Ashley Johnson having trouble holding on to the snap. It happened for him on a field goal attempt right. in the first quarter. It happens again here. And I, I wouldn't blame that on the center at all. I think that snap by John Dale Cooper was fine. As was the snap in the first quarter. It's just a matter of 
looking that ball in. I remember before practice one day with the Redskins, we were out there and I was taking long snaps and I was just trying to catch them like a punter would catch them and just seeing what they, and they come back there awful fast. And if you look away, you'll miss that ball. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a lot harder to do than you think. So I can just imagine, a, you know, a holder having to catch it, put it down, get his finger out of the way so you don't get it kicked. Right. And all that happening in a very short time, you know, so the kicker can go through his motion. Well, when Brian Reynolds missed the point after, a little while ago, you thought maybe that might come back and hurt them, but with this missed point after, now it's still just a 14-point game for Tennessee State. No advantage, but they do have to put the ball in the end zone a couple of more times. Here's Toy Thigpen on the kickoff, looking for a hole. And they said here at Jackson State that Thigpen is just waiting for that hole. He's due. It's about time he break one. He's your leading punt returner in the SWAC. And for Tennessee State, five plays, 60 yards, took just a little over a minute and a half to get it in. The pool within 14 points. And, and you wonder when you're late in the football game, Charles, sometimes you get your best drive because you're not thinking too much. It's more reaction as opposed to thinking when the time is running out on you. Well, a lot of people complain about the two-minute drill. When, people can, when teams can move the offense all the way down the field very quickly, you wonder, why did they do that the whole game? And that's a question that you've got to ask. Why don't we run our two-minute offense a little bit more often than at the last two minutes of the football game or two minutes before the half? That's what you practice at after every practice, at the end of the practice, you finish those practices with the two-minute drill. And so you work on it, you work on it, then you get a chance to do it out here. And that's really what Tennessee State did. Nathan McLaurin, in that last play, met by Desmond Scantling. And I mean met. Scantling I mean, they said, it. how do you do? And Probably wasn't as cordial as Nathan would have liked it to be. <laughs> okay. Second and 12 is the situation, but we've got 15 seconds left on the clock. And if you're JSU or a fan of JSU, you would figure that the Tigers are just going to take this snap and down. Take that lead and get out of here. Let the bands come out and do their thing. Because you get a good look at Robert Kent. And Kent has completed just one of 12 passes. He came into this game only having completed 14% of his passes, okay? 14. And yet his club leads 20 to 6. So maybe it's not the numbers as a flag is thrown at about the 25-yard line. And in, in this case, that flag was thrown. It is a call, and it should be defensive offsides. It's another disregard the flag. <laughs> All right. So flags are just coming out from, you know, there's a, a quick twitch on somebody that's pulling that flag when they don't really mean to pull it, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Inside handoff this time goes to Duxville. And Walter Reese brings him down on the 40, but that should do it here in the first half. So Jackson State has pretty much been in control in this one. Tennessee State was able to put six points on the board right before the end of the first half, thanks to a five-yard touchdown run by Rob. But it really has been the Nathan McLaurin show. He's had touchdown runs of 47 and 68. The 68-yard touchdown run was Jackson State's first play of the game. Mm -hmm. and because of the big runs by McLaurin, and then the touchdown pass to Lawrence Story for 45 yards. Jackson State leads this one 20 to 6 over Tennessee State. Both teams in the series between the two have 16 wins to their credit. As you see, Jackson State out of the SWAT. Tennessee State from the OVC. So we go to commercial break, and when we come back, we'll have loads of halftime festivities here on BET.
over Tennessee State by the score of 20 to 6. And right at the end of the first half, Joe Claire caught up with the head coach of Jackson State, Robert Hughes. All right, John, I'm here with Coach Robert Hughes of Jackson State. Coach Hughes, Coach Hughes, can you tell us, uh, congratulations on your first half, congratulations on your first half. Can you tell us uh, what you expect for the second half? Uh, we're going to have to come out and put some more points on the board. 20 points is not going to win this game. Uh, we're going to shut them down. We can't let them score again. And uh, we got to put the, take the game and put it in our hands. What do you have to? What is the one factor that you have to take out of Tennessee State's game to make sure that that happens? Uh, we we just going to have to come out and step up our tempo. All right, back to y'all, Georgia Chuck. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it. And welcome back. So Robert Hughes obviously knows that his team has to put more points on the board to keep Tennessee State at bay. Right now, it's the sonic boom of the South on the field as Jackson State's marching band is out there. Dr. Lewis Liddell is your senior director. Jimmy James is your chairperson. So sit back and relax as the sonic boom of the South entertains you.
A good look at Jackson State strutting their stuff. But the show's just begun. Tennessee State's marching band is right around the corner. And we have them come your way after this. Director Bands, Louis Lavelle Sr., assistant director Bands, and head arrangement. Welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee, where it is halftime here, Jackson State and Tennessee State, going over the adjustments for the second half while the bands perform. By the way, this week's random drawing winner of the Pizza Hut Party Prize is Catherine Taylor of Clinton, Louisiana. Congratulations, Catherine. You will receive a $100 Pizza Hut gift certificate for submitting the correct final score for the last Southwest Airlines Black College football game right here on BET. You could be our next winner by sending in the final score of today's game, the address on your screen. So we're here at halftime, George Johnson, along with Charles Mann. As you can see, the Tennessee State Band out there doing their thing. But let's talk very quickly about Tennessee State, able to put some points on the board prior to the end of the first half. Momentum enough to get them back in this game? I don't know if it was momentum enough. I think that the missed extra point could put a damper on that. But I think what Coach uh, Reese has to do is he has to go in and tell this young ball club that we're only two scores away. We can do this thing. On the other side of the ball, Jackson State has not looked that impressive at 20 to nothing. I mean, you take away the freshman running back, uh, the kid, and, and you know, they're in a, in a shootout of six to nothing or so. So both teams are, are not doing that well, except Jackson State has made enough plays to stay in this ball game. Okay, well, listen, still got halftime festivities for you as we take you back to the field and watch Tennessee yeah. State's band do their thing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, beauty, charm, the sophisticated ladies. marching band. We go to commercial break. When we come back, Charles and I will look at the first half stats and highlights here on BET. It has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com, a symbol of e-freedom. That's our halftime report brought to you by Southwest Airlines. George Johnson along with Charles Mann, Joe Claire is down on the field right now. And the first half, it really was about running. 
I mean, there weren't a lot of passes that were completed, so you figured that the big plays were done on the ground. And Nathan McLaurin was the one who supplied us with the thrills early on. And when you, you're faced with a young team that doesn't have their timing down, the best way to get into a ball game is give the ball to a running back who knows how to hit a hole. And right there, Nathan McLaur McLaurin knew what to do with the football when he got that pitch. Well, that was his second touchdown run. Here's a good look at his first. Broke a couple of tackles, went right up the gut, in between the tackles, and at the time caught Tennessee State in a blitz situation. They had no safeties back there to help. That was Jackson State's first play from scrimmage. Here they are with their third touchdown. And this one, <laughs> amazing enough, that was Kent's first reception, I mean, first touchdown, I mean, first completion, excuse me, for a touchdown. Here's Kent Evans coming right back, lobbing this one downfield. And the pass was intercepted by Xavier Denson. We've seen a few interceptions here in the first half. That right there would stop a tack by Tennessee State, although a touchdown run by Rob to end the first to half is what gave the Tigers of Tennessee State their six points, and that's why they trail 20 to six as we take a look at our Southwest Airlines first half stats. And this really was, this really was a tale of two quarters. In the first quarter, you have Jackson State really dominating with 149 yards of total offense, where TSU only had 56. In the second quarter, it was Jackson State with only 70 yards and Tennessee State with 133 yards. And, and you look at the numbers there, time of possession, Tennessee State. First downs, Tennessee State. Yet, they're losing on the scoreboard. That's a good look at our halftime stats brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com, a symbol of e-freedom. Well, we heard from Coach Hughes in the beginning of our halftime festivities. Let's go down to the field, and Joe Claire has more. Joe? for that but if you're Tennessee State what are you thinking right now what's going on through your mind in terms of trying to turn things around you haven't been able to throw the football and yet you've got to make something happen can you keep giving it to Rob can you keep giving it to Brantley can you keep can you give it to Durden and try to get back in this game I think coach Reese's main job his main job was in at halftime and the halftime speech as you see the total yards where we just talked about yes the main, his main job was to encourage the young guys on the football team and let them not get down and give them some kind of rah-rah speech that tells them, hey, I still believe in you. We can still accomplish all the things we want to accomplish this season. Yes, we went 11-0 last year, but that's last year. We need to do it now. You can't live off of what we did last year. That's the kind of speech that needed to come out of that Tennessee State locker room. Outside of the speech, though, what... How, what, you know, what do you say they do? How do they attack this defense of Jackson State, which has been extremely active? The, the, the corners have done a great job for Jackson State. Xavier Denson has been unbelievably active defensively. Mouton's been good at one cornerback for them, and Kenny Bryant solid on the other side. As you can see, Jackson State will get the kick. You put in Jermaine Smith. You tell him any of the passes I'm going to give to you, you're going to throw them short. They're going to be short passes, timing routes, little short stuff. We're going to dink our way down the field. We're going to beat this Jackson State team with the West Coast offense that they're, they're supposed to be running. Well, there's a good look right there at Kent Nevins. When the first half completed 7 of 18 for 78 yards. His longest completion was 17 yards. I'd like to see Jermaine Smith in there. I mean... It, just based on what I saw, I'd like to see Jermaine Smith in there 
let's see what he can do in the third quarter. If he can't do anything, then you put Kenton Evans back in. Well, the success here at Tennessee State is well documented. I mean, in every decade, they have been able to record an undefeated season. That's amazing. In 47, they were 10-0. In 54, they were 10-0. 56, 10-0. In the 60s, they went undefeated in 65. Went undefeated in 73. Went undefeated in 84. And last year, 11-0. And the number one team in all of Division I AA when the regular season came to an end. They went to the first round playoffs. They lost to North Carolina A&T, another very good football team, who, by the way, handed Tennessee State a loss last week. So it was an right. opportunity to get back at them. They were unable to capitalize. Here we are, starting off our second half. Good kick, and poor Dick King will not be able to bring it back. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line for Jackson State. They had won the toss in the first, they deferred, gave the football to Tennessee State. So they now have the football, and you talked about momentum. What a good way to get momentum back, but getting the football with the lead and maybe working the ball down the field. Yeah, this is so important. The third quarter, the first few minutes back, you know, you got those orange slices that you ate at halftime, settling in on your stomach. <laughs> you do. I'm serious. You, you, you rest it. You don't have any sweat on you anymore. You're cold. This is the time to get the execution going again. And Daniel Guy on the reverse. And he had a little blocking out in front of him. Unfortunately, the guy trying to make a block for him was his quarterback, Robert Kent. We all know quarterbacks don't make the best blocks. <laughs> so with that, Daniel Guy okay. will lose a couple of, and I know there's a couple of quarterbacks out there upset with me right now, but let's face it. They won't even let you hit late, hit a quarterback late. He lost two yards on that play, so God takes a minus two. That's not what I just talked about, about coming out in the third quarter and then establishing yourself again. A lot of times, games are lost in those first few minutes of the third quarter. The Tennessee State's defense was up to the task on that play. And now we've got a second down, and they're going to actually say he lost three yards on the play. Second down and 13. Inside handoff to McLaurin. McLaurin works his way back past the initial line of scrimmage and picks up and added three or four yards on the play. Bryce Smith, the middle linebacker, is the one who made the tackle. We haven't said Bryce Smith's name a whole lot. He's number 45. He's the top tackler on the team and a transfer from Western Michigan. Yeah, he has been quiet in that middle. He's number 45 right there. 6'1", 235-pound, red trick sophomore from Miami. Good play to get that away. McLaurin has a first down and more. And then the ball There's comes foul. loose. And it was picked up by Stevens. Stevens still has it. Stevens made a move. And Stevens is finally dragged down inside the 20-yard line. But was the ball dead? No, the ball was not dead. Nathan McLaurin was still trying to get some extra yards. And there's been a lot of stripping, which we've been watching the whole night. Guys reaching for the ball. What, what you do is the first guy that gets to the football, as we see the replay, what a nice forcing the quarterback to pitch that ball. As he's struggling to try to get extra yards, everybody comes up and strips. It was not down. The ball pops up in the air right there, right there. And number 53, B.J. Fletcher, who we were just talking about earlier as well, makes a nice play on the ball to strip it out of there. That was actually Marquise Stevens who made the play. Brantley off the halfback option. Touchdown! And that happened very quickly. Julius Hall with the touchdown catch. And folks, all of a sudden, Tennessee State is back in this football game. The first few minutes of the third quarter, I'm telling you. Now, they tried this play earlier in the game, and it didn't get down the field. The ball was not thrown very good, and now they come back with it. You got a game plan, and sometimes the things don't work at particular times, but when you call them again, they're effective. He sells the run, stops, and just really didn't even stop. He just tossed it down the field. And, and, and Hall had to make an adjustment as Seth Good Owens applies the point after to bring Tennessee State now within seven. But again, credit Julius Hall with his fourth touchdown catch. And that wasn't an easy one. He had to make an adjustment. We'll have more after this.
scored 13 unanswered points, have scored on their last two possessions, the possession right before the end of the first half, and then their first possession here, a touchdown pass from Brantley to Hall. And all of a sudden, we've got a football game, folks. It's 20 to 13, Jackson State in the lead. Tori Thigpen back deep to receive the kickoff. Thigpen averaging 22 yards per return. Takes this one at the set. Still on his feet. Out by the 30. And gets about the same amount of yards as he's averaging. He takes the ball out to the 35-yard line. That'll be actually a 32-yard return. I like the way he's running this football. I mean, he's determined. He's running in there. He doesn't want to break down. He had to make a cut right there to get to the outside before he's hauled down. But that was a very nice run. You can start on the 30-yard line each time and only have 70 yards to go for a touchdown. That's not bad. One of the hardest working players on the team as we've got movement on the offensive line, and that's Jason Entzminger on the foot 74, the transfer from the University of Colorado. He's a senior from Temple Hills, Maryland. Temple Hills. Yeah, we like to say Temple Hills in the house. Black Entertainment Television up in Washington, D.C. So Temple Hills is one of the neighbors. First down. B.J. Fletcher made Jason Ainsmaker move. Talking to him a little bit, probably. Trying to get him uh, going. Fletcher wasn't even supposed to start. He wasn't even on the two deep when you get right. those, that information. But for a young man that wasn't supposed to play, at least in our eyes, he has done a heck of a job at linebacker today. Number 53. The fake. And here's Kent. Kent is dragged down. And boy, he got hit hard. <laughs> Yeah, Billy Grayson, you've got big, you've got big Walter Reese there as well. Not an easy day, and even Fletcher was around the football. Actually, this was a bobbled snap. Couldn't get the ball, and so the play was dead. And what he's doing is trying to get some positive yardage out of that before he gets body slammed. So here we are now, second down and 16. Robert Kent, who completed just one of 12 passes in the first half, is dumped. Sat you know, to Desmond Scantling. You know, your, your fullbacks are supposed to be able to be great blockers. Damian Ducksworth, number 42, does not get the cut block on Desmond Scantling, number 56 right there. And watch this one-on-one, -on -one, Ducksworth against Scantling. He gives him the old limp leg and goes un over <laughs> the top of the cut block. To Damian Duxworth. Now, Damian who, who is a pretty good leg. Was it Duxworth who went down with the lip? No. <laughs> Duxworth went low on Scantling. Scantling gave him the old dead leg and got over him. Third down and long and a little delayed handoff to Duxworth. And that's sort of just saying we just want to get rid of this football and giving it right back to Tennessee State. And you can see now how the pep in the step of Tennessee State has arrived. That's that speech I'm telling you at halftime. That speech that Coach Reese gave has gotten his players fired up. I talked about how important it was those first few minutes in the third quarter. It could change a game. Charles is talking about James Reese, the first year coach for Tennessee State. Just 31 years old, but he was the offensive coordinator for the club last year. Of course, he's a TSU grad. And Kent's punt down at about the 35-yard line. Not a bad punt for Robert Kent. 10.51 left here in our third quarter. We'll have more after this. Where this portion of today's game is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. I got Charles up here. He's getting all giddy, you see. When he sees another defensive end arrive in the area, one that he went against, well, then he gets a little excited. And Joe Claire down on the field. I wonder if this guy can keep Joe quiet. Out. Check this out. I'm down on the field with a couple of legends. My man Ed, two tall Jones, Richard Dent. What's the matter? Oh, man. Hey, it's having fun, man. Now, listen, you went to Tennessee State, yes. My pops went to Tennessee State. Did you ever play against my, my father, Joe Clay? No, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> How you doing, man? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm good. Now, now Charles, man, told me to ask, uh, what's the number one? Man, yeah. Y'all know him? Oh, yeah. I know. They, 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 
They, they say they don't know you, brother. I know who Dexter Manley is. Uh, 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 back up to y'all, man. Back up to y'all. Back up to y'all, man. That, that is totally disrespectful. Boy, oh, that, boy, wait till, oh, boy. Wait until I see them boy, at the oh, club boy. after the game. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Now, Richard Denton and I played for... together. <laughs> Here's Rob on first and 10 for Tennessee State with momentum in the football at the 36-yard line. Rob, excuse me, I'm sorry, Charles. Rob in the first half rushed for 55 yards on 10 carries. That's good for five yards per clip, which is what he averages anyway. Yeah, uh, those guys, <laughs> I tell you. Richard Dan, of course. See, was, well, if I would have been down there doing the interview, I would have, you know, as soon as Too Tall said something like that, I'd ask him how was his boxing career. <laughs> and then when Richard Dent started talking smack, I, no. Yeah, okay, let me be quiet. Anyway, I, <laughs> They better recognize. Rob picked up close to five yards on that play. And here's Kenton Evans back to pass. Again, pressure. Evans over the 40. Scoots out of bounds, but he's still going to be shy of a first down. May have picked up four yards on that play. Right now, his best asset is his legs. You know, he's, he's gotten himself out of a, a bunch of trouble with those quick feet of his. Well, in the you first, see, I'm sorry, Troy. We see him setting up. He didn't see anything. He gets on the corner. What the receivers have to do to help him out in this situation, when they see their quarterback scrambling, you've got to come back towards the football. Create an opportunity for him to get it to you. And we've got an offside. We're going to see whether Jackson State was pulled off. First half, Kenton Evans also ran the football for 20 yards. So uh -huh. I don't know if I'd be messing with big Isaiah Hayward, 6'4", 315-pound senior, but you know what? Dante Jones, number 94, said, that's all right, I'll mess with him. Look at him trying to get out of his stance. He <laughs> wanted to get out of his stance because big boy Dante Jones, number 94, and you don't ever do that. <laughs> See, that offensive lineman always gets the last laugh when they're cutting at your knees and whatnot. Right. You don't ever want to get them too upset. So now it's third down. Look at that offensive line, Hayward, Cooper, BC, McAllister, and Smith. Giving good protection. Pass is complete. As Andy Dorje makes the catch. Good for first down yard as they go inside Jackson State territory. And maybe, just maybe, Kenton Evans is starting to feel that groove. Must have been the halftime speech. 18-yard pickup on that play. Nice setup. You see, you see uh, Dante Jones coming into your picture there. He made a nice rip move around David Clark, but it was too late as Kenton Evans get the, gets the ball off. Durge now has two receptions for 30 yards. Just look at the effort by Rob. The senior from Gallatin, Texas, with a great run right there. Amariah. One of the tough things about this Tennessee State roster, man, is to look at some of the names that they have on here. Toriano and Andy Dorje and <laughs> Amariah Rob, K-Ron, or is it Keyron? But they go by K-Ron with them. But just some, some very interesting names on this team. And there is Evans again. This one off the back foot completes to Morgan. And that now is an example. Maybe he's hitting that strip, that you know, that stroke right now. Yeah, no, he, he's got his stride on now because this was a this was a middle linebacker rush. As we see the replay. We see Edward Reese, number 56, coming right up the middle. And actually, you didn't get to see it in that play, but Ken Evans was definitely rushed. And he throws that ball a little sidearm. For Toriano Morgan, that's his first reception of the year. And look at this, another completed pass. This one goes to Key. And Gabriel's still on his feet, down the sidelines. Does he get in? touchdown play for K-Ron Key and boy I gotta tell you you gotta give him all the credit for that one yeah that was all K-Ron he had a guy draped on him when he caught the ball we're talking about at this point we're talking about one two as you see this once again a nice throw by Kenton Evans off his back foot 
and then it's all K-Ron right here breaking one tackle. I mean, just, just he tried to disrobe him, breaks both through those, breaks a third tackle. Kick is up, kick is good, game is tied. And when you break a tackle attempt by Edward Reese, you've done something, which is exactly what he did on that play. 20 unanswered points. We've got a game, folks. Absolutely. 8-14 left in our third quarter. It is 20 to 20. We'll be back with more after this. Kenton Evans has completed 50% of his passes. I mean, he really has picked it up, and because he has gotten hot, his Tennessee State Tigers have gotten back in this football game, and we're all tied up at 20 apiece. Evans is four of five here in the second half, and his team is looking good. Well, what's happening is, is, is this Tennessee State football team has gone to the little short passes. They're not trying to throw the ball down the field deep. They're throwing it to the normally in a situation where you're getting one-on-one -on -one coverage where you can break a tackle or make a play, but they're putting the ball in the athlete's hands and letting them make plays. Tory Thigpen is back deep to receive the kick of Seth Goodowens. And this would be an excellent time to run this thing back and well, get the a, momentum to change. He had a 75-yard punt return last week that was called back. He's still on his feet trying to get to the sideline, but boy, Tennessee State converges on him at about the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Jackson State. Tennessee State has gotten back into this game, and they haven't been doing it with a whole lot. I mean, it's just, like you said, the short dinks, but six plays, 65 yards, took just two and a half minutes, and, of course, the key play was the touchdown pass to Key. K-Ron just, um, <laughs> he, he worked that. He worked that hard. He wanted that. So now it's first and 10 for Jackson State. Robert Ken has been your quarterback. T.C. Taylor was the returning quarterback from a year ago, was an important fixture at the offense, and started the first two games of the season. With four but interceptions, one, four interceptions. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you need absolutely. to make something happen. Four interceptions and only one touchdown pass, so they brought in Robert Kent, who they feel is more of a pro-style quarterback. And boy, oh boy, Tennessee State has turned up the heat. Walter Reese with the tackle there. Um, and Nathan McLaurin. And you just, if you're a Jackson State fan, hope that it doesn't start to snowball on you. I mean, when you get to the point where Tennessee State starts doing everything right and nothing you do is right. But what, what they need to do is they can't go three plays and out here. They have to establish something right here. They have to move the ball down the field. Even if they don't score, you've got to control the ball for a while, give your defense a little bit of a rest. It is, like I said, a cool night, so. McLaurin again with the carry. And this time he picks up about seven yards on the play. I like the way he delivered the blow on that play. You know, you're you're the running back. You're supposed to be getting tackled. The, the defender is supposed to be bringing it to you. But watch McLaurin as he delivers the blow. Huh? What? You see that? You hear that? And you feel that? Huh? And, the, you feel that? and listen, the guy that he delivered it to, Marquis Stevens, yeah, yeah. was a former linebacker who used to be a defensive end who's now a safety. So he's, going... he's got the body of a safety. I don't know about the other positions. McLaurin would probably agree with you. A little mix-up right there offensively for Kenton. He's forced to eat it, but he may have gotten close to first down by, but he still looks like he's maybe a yard short. Now this is going to be interesting. You you punt the football and give them keep the momentum. Now somebody turned the wrong, either the quarterback turned the wrong way or the running back ran to the wrong hole on the wrong side of the quarterback. I'm not sure. So they're going to punt this football and put it back in their defensive defense hands to really try to stop and take the air out of Tennessee State's offense. And Robert Kent, who averaged 39 yards per punt in the first half, is back to punt. And they've got the big man, Julius Hall, back to return. At the 25, at the 30, at the 40. He's at the field, looking for some blocker. Cut back the other way. He's now at the 40. Hey, I've got to make a play. 
Hogue on the field back at the 25. Great run here. Looking for blockers, looking to pick up a little caravan. There he gets a caravan. Three blockers out in front of him, running to the sideline. Nice, nice run. Hall's with... Look at this straight arm right there. He wanted this. Julius Hall wanted this play bad. Looking for his blockers. Reversing field. He's got three blockers ahead of him right here. He should have waltzed into the end zone right here. And finally, Great it's play. Kent who takes yeah. him out after a 63-yard return. Like I said, there was a flag back at the 25-yard line, and yet that they picked those, it up. That's one, one of those quick flags. flags. Yeah. yeah, we've seen that we've seen seven, about, eight, nine, yeah. ten times today. Exactly. So here's Tennessee State knocking on the door. Momentum has really shifted. <laughs> I'd say this so. is amazing. The momentum's so thick, you can you can feel it. Evans lobs. Evans. Carlos Thomas, the Tennessee tight end. State, unbelievable. Trailing in this football game, 20 to nothing at one point, have answered with 26 points in lead by six. This is a totally different football team. This is a football team now that believes in themselves. Look at the replay here. Quarterback rolls out to buy some time. All the while, he was going to throw that football. It's kind of hard when you're right-handed, rolling, rolling right and having to throw it right. And the kick is up and good by Seth Goodowitz. So how about this, folks? If you turn the tube off at 20 to nothing, you turned it off way too soon. Touchdown play right here to Carlo Thomas. And Tennessee State leads by seven. Touchdown passes, one to K-Ron Key and another to Carlo Thomas for 12 yards. And because of those two touchdown passes, Tennessee State leads now 27 to 20. We still have six minutes left here in the third quarter. Charles, you talked about it. It's that momentum. It's coming out there at the beginning of the third quarter. And they, they played the script out perfectly for it. I think Jackson State is still dealing with those, you know, orange slices and a little lactic acid that's built up in the muscles and all the stuff that you get when you go in, when you're all sweaty and you're hot and the momentum is yours and you're doing well, you go in there and you sit in those chairs and you watch the ball. We can't get the ball to stay on the tee there, so somebody's got to go over there and hold it, like the old days. Well, back deep to receive this kick is Tory Thigpen, and like I said before, Thigpen is due. I mean, they're waiting for this guy to break something open. This would be a perfect time for him to do that. As I said, had a 75-yard punt return called back last week, which would have given his club the, the lead. Win. The, the, the victory, win. probably. It was three minutes and something left to go in the game. Over Texas Southern, but they ended up losing the TSU. And here comes Thigpen, 15. And taken down at the 22-yard line. That's his average, too. And a good play there by Bilal Davis, as well as... And look at the score by quarters here. Jackson State jumps out 14 to nothing. The second quarter, it's 6-6 even. And the third quarter, it's been all Tennessee State. It's like a new team. A new vision. And you might want to say that it was really theirs near the end of the second quarter because that's when they got that, that first touchdown to get going. They didn't really get the momentum there, though. You know, they missed the extra point. They didn't really have the momentum. They've, they've gathered the moment, momentum up from Jackson State and from this crowd and from the band and from everywhere. Let's go on down to Joe Claire standing by on the sideline. Yo, thanks, uh, Georgia Charles. I'm standing here with a legend. Tennessee State alumni, Ralph Boston, three-time Olympic medal winner. How you doing? The momentum, is, the momentum is picked up. Tennessee State is winning. How do you feel? Well, I just brought that with me. You see, when I came out on the field, they started doing it. What's up, George Johnson? You all right up there? I'm doing good. How you doing, sir? Hey, George, I just let you know. See, I come from good stock. This brother went to school with my father when he was at Tennessee State, and they said they conspired to create me. That's how I got here. That's why I'm here reporting the game today. I think, George, I got to tell you, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> but, the, but the word conspiracy. Good. Back to y'all, man. Back to y'all up top. All right, good looking. Three. <laughs> Three 
somewhere. That, that is scary. They the, conspired. To... The word conspiracy fits somewhere. <laughs> Whoa. All right. But Joe is having a good time. It always feels good when you get around somewhere where you feel comfortable, and that's the atmosphere that you get when you go to black universities and when you attend them and when your parents attended them. My parents went to Dillard University down in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. So here we go. Tory Digpen. Gonna give it a shot again. Takes it at the goal line. Out to the 20, and he's tripped up at the 22. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, and absolutely nothing gained on that one. As those start from the same place he's at, no. from the prior kickoff. You ever hear the phrase, shoestring tackle? <laughs> this is what we see right here. Just gets, actually, I think that was the line. There was a little line monster right yes. there. <laughs> Reached up from the, from the white That chalk. monster has been pulling flags all oh, over the place. Tripping man. up runners. So 541 left here in our third quarter. You see the score. Top left of your screen. Jackson State, we'll see how they answer. A little quarterback draw by Kent. And credit Bryce Smith, he stayed home and made the play. Well, they, they brought they brought a, that right there, what we saw was a stunt by Walter Reese, the linebacker. They just brought one linebacker just to bring an extra rusher. You see him at the top of your screen right there. Runs into uh, Damian Ducksworth. Pick up, a, pick up of about four. Let's make it second and six. And they're Here doing it the again. Pressure. And this time he gets his pass off and a great catch by Tory Thigpen. Didn't gain any yards, but the effort. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, that catch was kind of uncalled for. It's like, you know, I did all that, got my ribs kind of broke up a little bit, and I didn't gain a yard. <laughs> what we're seeing uh, Tennessee State now do is they're rushing extra people on every play now. They're bringing linebackers on every play. One we saw two plays ago. This time they brought three linebackers to put pressure. Well, Robert Kent is just a freshman. So he can be rattled. Here he is throwing a pass and boy. That should be good. We're going to say he caught that yes. great catch right there from good throw by Kent. That pass didn't have anything on it. Kind of wobbled that little Billy Kilmer action going out. But a great catch right there by Lawrence Story for the first down. <laughs> Lawrence Story is running a prototype. That's, that is a sideline play. I remember as a kid, we used to do that all the time. We'd run five or six steps to the sideline, stagger our feet, you know, make sure we touch them on the, on the ground, and then catch the ball. That's textbook right there. First and ten. Inside handoff. And the defense stiffens. A kick to the head as you get up. Just let them know you were there. <laughs> That was Marcel Goodlock. You didn't see that, did you? And Manny Robles. I don't look at the dirty well, stuff, but I, that's the part of the game. That's the part of the game. It's played between the lines. You know, you never made it between the lines. <laughs> Not when I was a big boy. Not at all. Little look at, boy, the, yes. look at the difference. Look at the difference there in total yards. First half Dirty to second is half. dirty, baby. Dirty is dirty. Single setback. Unblocked. Reese. Unblocked. Linebackers on every play. Walter Reese comes on the backside, is untouched. Look at the tackles he has. Untouched. Watch at the top of your screen. Here he comes, number 40. And it's just a foot race. And that good for minus eight. So now the football is marked back at the 37 yard line. Defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, Andre Creamer, is <laughs> he's drawn it up in the chalk. 30-17 downfield, had a receiver and overthrew it. Daniel, Daniel Guy. Guy had gotten behind the defense and was open. He's still and looking Kent for just a highlight. It. It, uh, Daniel Guy is still looking for a highlight. This is supposed to be his, his year to shine. Sylvester Morris went into the NFL first round draft pick for Kansas City. This past season, Daniel Guy thinks his turn is next. The pro scouts have been watching him. It's a shame, though, he had a nice move on Antonio Jones and had beat him, but the ball never got to him. So again, kicking his kick. Back to receive. The 
Brees Hall. Hall and the the There's it's a fumble, and it looks like Jackson State may have it. I think Hall was able to pick it back up, but I'm not sure. No, they're going in the this. direction. Jackson, Jackson State. State. Jackson State able to get the football. You know, the, the defense of Julius Hall, that punt by Robert Kent was kicked in a way. Look how the ball comes in. It was like a duck. He never did have possession of it. Never did gain possession of it. It went between his legs, and then he was tackled. And number 33 for Stacey Jackson State. Smith. Stacy Smith with the recovery. That's right. So Jackson State now with a chance. We're going to go back and forth here. Inside hand on one hand off to Ducksworth. And once again, the linebackers coming off the corner. That's what we keep seeing that over and over again. That was Desmond uh, yes. Stantling coming off the corner. You got to be happy you as a former defensive end, looking at these defensive ends out here on the field, Scantling and Grayson uh, for They're Tennessee playing. State. That played real well. What I like about them, and we have a player down on the field, it looks like an ankle. What looks like, wait a minute. Looks like foot, an ankle. Wait, is that foot turned the other way? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's Jason oh. Ensminger. His foot is complete. It looks like it's turned around. Boy. They just popped it back in the socket, it looks like. Okay. Man, you don't ever want to see that. Jason Ensminger, 6'5", 295, seniors, had a good career here. What happens a lot of times. Oh, they rolled him they right They rolled him up, oh. and you see his ankle right there got caught, and his foot is staying that way. Oh, my goodness. And we hope that he's all right. He's a transfer from the University of Colorado to this program. Mm. Didn't start last year, but they, they got him in, and he saw considerable playing time and this year, brought him in, and expected to be the left tackle throughout the season. We hope that that's not serious. We'll just have to wait and see if popping it back in. Oh, downfield, touchdown. That is Kendrick Travis. And that didn't take long, folks. They re recover the punt fumble by Julius Hall. And in two plays, get into the end zone. Touchdown pass from Robert Kent to Kendrick Travis. And they don't throw to the tight end too often, folks. Both tight ends had three receptions apiece last year. That wasn't a pretty route <laughs> either, <laughs> but it was effective. So, so it shows they don't throw it all too often. 21-yard huh? touchdown play. He turned to the inside, Kendrick Travis turned to the inside. Then the ball came to the outside. He ended up turning to the outside. And now Brian Reynolds, who's already hit the crossbar today on the point after. The tire. And he can't tie it. Blocked. And that ball's still live. This is amazing. I have never seen this many big plays on special teams like I've seen today in the kicking department. The holder, again, does not... Well, that was a low snap as well. It was a low snap that went on the ground. Then it was picked up by Tim Manning. And Tim could not get it up in time. He tried to turn the laces. That was that kick was just too slow. Marquis Stevens was the man who blocked the kick. <laughs> Unbelievable that they can't convert on the point after it now trail by one, 27-26. Kicker this point, Brian Reynolds was that wasn't all his fault. This portion of today's game is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. Let's take a look now at our 1-800 connection play of the game. And it's this touchdown right here that brings Jackson State within one. 21 yards from Robert Kent to Kendrick Travis. That is your 1-800 connection play of the game. Today's connection has been brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. And actually, we could have been doing 1-800-COLLECT for about uh, the last half hour because we've seen some unbelievable connections. I mean, 
Evans comes out, throws three touchdown passes. Jackson State answers with that one from Kent to Travis. And now Michael Durden having his problems getting to the outside. Jackson State getting good coverage from their special teams. You know, you talk about special teams. Special teams, this game is going to be won or lost by special teams. A lot of people don't know how important it is for all three aspects of your game to be working, the offense, defense, and special teams. The teams that take care of the business on the, on the special teams nowadays end up winning a lot of ball games. What happens on special teams is there's huge chunks of yards to be gained or lost on special teams and also points. So here's Tennessee State for the one-point lead. Hendrick, Kenton Evans over the middle. Good defensive play out there for Jackson State. And again, it's that middle linebacker, Edward Reese, who got a hand on the ball. He's everywhere. He was in his zone. He saw the ball come through his zone. And you see Ensminger, they're wrapping his leg. I'm, I'm sure that uh, it's an, I hope it's an ankle. Look at him trying to root everybody on. He's not worried about his ankle right now. Can you pop something like that in place and maybe miss a couple of weeks as opposed to the whole season? <laughs> well, if it's his ankle, which it looked like it was, his foot was turned sideways kind of, you have ligaments that hold that ankle in place. What a great, what a great Look at Rob, Rob, Rob. Marcus Greer has missed so many tackles tonight, and I hate pointing them out like that. But I mean, that could have been a play made on the 12-yard line for a, you know, six-yard loss. Instead, Rob is able to advance the football eight yards. And MRI Rob has 76 yards on 13 carries, and a lot of those yards coming like this, he has run hard all game long. Because there have not been big holes for him to run through. He's Third. created most of this. Third and short. Pass is complete to Rob. Rob, run out of bounds. And for Rob, that's just his third reception of the season. First of the ball game. Kenton Evans is really settled in at that quarterback position. He really is, you know, he's, he's playing extremely well right now. And here's the reception. Great hands. They should be throwing the ball to him more. Well, Rob can catch the football now. I mean, last year he had 702 yards rushing. <laughs> he took a seat on Jackson State's bench. <laughs> Got knocked to his seat. Just to talk to him a little bit. But he caught several balls last year, this time trying to get the outside off tackle. But it looks now like Tennessee State says, hey, we're going to put it in the hands of Amariah and let him try to take some time off this clock and pick up some yardage. But as I said, ran for 702 yards last year, six yards per carry. Led the Tigers in rushing. And had 213 yards against Tennessee Tech last year. But last week he turned his ankle against North Carolina and T, but I haven't seen any effects, no. lingering effects of no. a bad ankle. Well, you remember when you were young, how quickly you healed. <laughs> yeah, and he's still young. Second down and 10. Evans, nice little play right there to Durge. And Andy gets out of bounds after picking up about five yards on the play. Number 54 strong side linebacker Zach Grady came in on the corner right here. Watch him. He had a chance to get his hands up and knock this ball away. He tries to swat at it, but couldn't get there. And Andy Durge makes a nice move. I would assume that's a good sign when you can start throwing that out pattern with some efficiency. That's one of the hardest passes to throw. And look like Kenton Evans is starting to settle down right now as he completes yet another pass to a receiver. This one is completed, completed to Carlos Wright for a first down. He's really getting very, very comfortable in there. He's now looking all over the field. He's Earlier in the game, he would look to one receiver and throw the ball to that one receiver. And on this particular play, I saw him look to two different receivers before he made his, his move. He's very settled. Uh, Jackson State is not doing what Tennessee State's defense did to them, and that was blitzing with linebackers and whatnot. This time it's Rob. And Rob running hard, dropped the football. And fell back on it. And he cannot afford that. Back to Kenton Evans. Evans 
as we start to roll down. I'll, I'll give you that thought when I get back from this commercial break as we run out of time here in our third quarter. And we have now come to the end of the third quarter. A very so exciting here we are at the three quarter. quarters of play. It's Tennessee State leading 27-26. Keep in mind, the Southern Heritage Classic being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. More right after this. Daniel, Southern Heritage Classic brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Tell me those folks aren't having fun. Good time down here. A great crowd. Tennessee State and Jackson State both with several members of their football teams who are from Memphis. And this is a game they all look forward to coming and playing. You get to play where you played your high school ball at in front of your friends and your family. And Tennessee State, as they start the fourth quarter, second down, seven for a first, and we had some jumping on the line. Looked like the defensive linemen were jumping, but the offensive linemen have to understand, don't move. Right, well, what happened was, when Zach Grady, number 54, jumped off sides, that is what they called, when he jumped off sides, it wouldn't have been off sides. He could have gotten back, but what they did is they snapped the football. And here's the third. Southwest Airlines statistics through three quarters, that is. Look at the passing for Tennessee State, 230 yards. That is very impressive. That is very impressive. But you normally win, you normally win by the rushing yards. You know, when you control the football, you're able to run the football. Going deep, got a receiver, got a touchdown. Ron Jackson, the freshman from Detroit, Michigan, who came up to me yesterday and said, hey, I see your names on your board. It's wrong. I'm Ron Jackson. And Jackson makes the play. You've got him as Davis, too. Jackson came up to me and said, I'm going to do something tomorrow. I'm going to make something happen. And he does. Touchdown pass from Kent Nevins. You like when they come up to you, huh? Well, but when they come to you, well, they want to make sure I say their names right. <laughs> it's not for love. It's just make sure you say my name right. 79-yard touchdown play. What makes this play happen is not only was it a great pass, but on the receiving end, Ron Jackson ran under the football. And it looks like the point after is no good. <laughs> so we've uh, had some problems that said. But with that missed point after, Jackson State still alive because now they trail by just seven. Right. So that was a big miss right. for Tennessee State. He hits that point after, and now they're sitting comfortably, and JSU is looking for a two-point conversion if this goes. The penalty we assessed on a kickoff. So a personal foul penalty was charged. We'll try to sort things out here from Memphis, where with 14-41 left in our football game, Tennessee State leads by 7, 33-26. to 26. More right after this. 41 left here in our football game. Tennessee State leading 33-26. to 26. After just scoring on a touchdown pass play to Ron Jackson from Kenton Evans. And Evans now starting to feel he's very comfortable out there. He's finding his receivers. He's throwing a pretty ball. That one was a beautifully lofted ball to his receiver. And he actually threw it out in front of him. Threw it out in front of him, made him go get it. And now Jackson State trailing by seven gets the football. Short kick. Takes it at the 30. This is actually Thigpen. Thigpen still looking to break it. We look like we got a face mask on that one. Good call. Good call. That's what it was. And there's two flags coming out. Wright made the tackle, but grabbed a little mask with him. No, that's a big mask. <laughs> a little mask would be five yards. A big mask is 15. <laughs> This ball was only kicked to the 30-yard line. Big Pin gets it, follows his blockers, and then all of a sudden decides to freelance. And watch right there, the face mask is grabbed. Now, that can hurt your neck. He, his neck could be sore tomorrow. That is very dangerous. Well, Deion Giddens was the guy, number two, who actually had made the best tackle of the two, but they could not use that penalty because leading by seven, Jackson State now has got great field position. They're at the 35-yard line, not far to go for seven. Still in. Kent 
at quarterback. McLaurin takes the pitch. McLaurin finds a hole. He's at the 20. And Great finally tackle. tripped up. Great tackle of Mark by Marquise Stevens. It was over. And there's something up about McLaurin. He doesn't run hard. It's just he's very patient, kind of just going through. I don't know about not running hard. Well, I don't mean it that way, but. He's running hard, breaking all the yes, farm tackles at the point of attack. And Marquise Stevens tries to tackle him up high, ends up sliding all the way down to his shoestrings. There you go. 20-yard pickup on that play. First and 10. Ball's at the 15. Again, McLaurin. And after a pickup of a couple of yards, he's brought down again by Stevens. Let's go down to Joe Claire on the field. Joe? Yeah, I got an update on Jason Ishminger, the uh, defensive tackle for Jackson State. His ankle is dislocated, and he will not be in the rest of the game. His family's watching. Uh, he's chilling. He's relaxing now. He's just going to chill and watch the rest of the game. Back to y'all up top, man. If that's I guess he, he was, he, he's cold chilling because he's, he's got chilling. ice on right now. I, that looked like it was dislocated. That is actually good news that it's not broken. Second down, and Kent looking for Guy. Guy had actually stopped, and it looked like Kent was throwing sort of a fade pattern to him. That's exactly, exactly what Kent thought was the play. Of course, Daniel Guy was trying to... He didn't care what he ran. <laughs> Just give it to me. As long as he gets the ball. <laughs> Just give me the ball, baby. I'm, I got my crowd here. You know, I'm from this area. Throw me the ball. The other number three that got his, I need to get mine. Third down and seven. <laughs> Talking about Tennessee State's Julius Hall. A little option. McLaurin. McLaurin had to hold on. Fumble. Fumble. He never had the ball. Never got it. And the ball is recovered for Tennessee State by number 88, Danny Roberson. Roberson, yeah. Haven't heard his name all day. Last year, Danny was absolutely impressive in the game that we did here. He kind of quiet this one, but he gets the fumble. These always scare me, these options. The, the running back has to get the ball before he looks upfield to see where the hole is. So what happened here with the rookie, and actually it hits him in his helmet. The ball was pitched a little high to Nathan and McLaurin, and he was running without the football, trying to desperately find it. That was a huge turnover right there. Look at the turnovers. It's even right now, and normally when the turnover ratio is even, you've got a pretty close ball game. Well, we've got a good one here. Tennessee State leading by seven. They have the football. That was Darnell Brantley with the carry. Now, momentum just swang, swang, <laughs> swung back to, <laughs> okay, George. <laughs> it swung right back to Tennessee State. <laughs> All right, now. I don't know how you can laugh quiet <laughs> like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> I need to learn that. Pass is complete to Dorje. And he is gang tackled by a host of players, led, of course, by Mr. Edward Reese. And, well, I'm going to get tired of saying number 56's name, but he continues to just be on each, on each and every play defensively. Now, this is a huge play right here. It's third down and one for Tennessee State. Talking about the momentum, I'm not going to sweat to say that it swung or swang, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's no longer with Yeah. <laughs> If Jackson State can stop them from getting this first down like they look like they're getting ready to do, they'll have to punt the ball, and they can, can they can still have an opportunity to get the ball around midfield with 11.42 left to go in the game. Reese, along with Marcus Greer, teaming up on Brantley on that play. That was a third and one situation, so now here we go, fourth down. If I had to pick, if I was doing a scorecard, um, you know, grading mm -hmm. on the different positions on the team, I would give linebackers today an A+. Plus. Linebackers on both sides of the football have done extremely well. Ashley Johnson punting for a thick pin. We have a flag. And boy, what a my, shot! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You just cannot have a mental mistake like that. 
Cunningham, you have, you're supposed to have an opportunity to catch the football. You cannot, that is a huge, that is 15 yards. You see the coach snatching him. Like, what are you doing? He wasn't thinking. And it's mistakes like that. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy for Torrey Thickpin that he's able to get up. So there were two flags. There was a flag before the punt, and then there was the personal foul hitting the return man before he has an opportunity to catch the ball. A dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Now, so now I do not believe that. I, I, I don't agree with this at all. They, they are saying that it was a legal procedure. So somebody on the offense move. Look at this hit. This hit is a, a, a well, he hit him right in the chest. And you know you do have low padding on the chest area and no shoulder pads. So the seven on seven drill is not supposed to be that physical. Oh, the landing is what probably is going to hurt him in the morning. Neck and shoulders will be a little stiff. You'll have to have that masseuse <laughs> work on him a little bit. And those and those and those orange wedges. <laughs> which we, quite frankly, still can't figure out up here. Well, what happened was a legal procedure, so they took the ball back, five-yard penalty, and now they have to repunt. It'll be better field position for Jackson State, but let's see if Big Pen still wants to return it. Made a nice move, trying to get to the outside. If he can, he will have some room. Good block right here. Big Pen still on his feet. Finally brought down by Donnell Brantley. He ran 50 yards to gain six yards on that punt. Which, I mean, <laughs> He's at the 44-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for Jackson State. They trail by seven with 10.48 left in the ball game. And you'll see the rest of it here on BET after this. Is here, the Southern Heritage Classic. And you can enjoy yourself no matter what your age at this football game. And you don't have to be a football fan, but if you are, you've got a great game going on. And if you're a fan of big-time players, we have two of them coming in, two guys that they consider pro prospects, right. and they both wear number three. Threes, the magic number. Look at tonight. Look at the numbers there. That is incredible. Four catches, 51 yards, one touchdown. Daniel Guy, also a Memphis native. That's not and Guy really has had a hard time getting on. I mean, this guy came in, the leading receiver on the team, with right. just five receptions coming in. Right. He cannot be the leading receiver after two games and just have five receptions. Well, we've, we, we've seen that... Uh, Unless, of course, you run the wishbone. You play for Oklahoma. Well, we've seen that this this team, T.C. Taylor, had started the other two, day, uh, other two games. Four interceptions, only one TD, 38% completion. They've, they've been struggling. But Robert Kent... Not much better at four for 17, but doing the things to keep his team in this football game. They still trail by seven as they get possession of the football inside Tennessee State territory. And on first and 10, they hand it to Damian Ducksworth, and Ducksworth carries it for about two yards. Ducksworth now with 32 yards on 10 carries. He's had a hard 32 yards. It's all been Nathan McLaren who's really had the success at running the football for Jackson State tonight. Clock continues to roll as we approach the 10 minute mark here in our football game. Kent looking downfield. Kent pass almost intercepted by not one but two players. Legarius Jennings had his hands on it first and couldn't hold on to it. And then it was Shanae Price who got a second shot. He couldn't bring it in. I don't know why they throw the football down the field like this. Double coverage. You see the safety working its way over there. Price should have had that. The ball never even gotten, got close to Daniel Guy. Never got close to him. So here we go. Third down and long. This time an easy pass pattern. And boy, oh boy, Michael Goss may have made a mistake because yes. instead of diving for that first down, he tried to make a move and he lost two yards and they may not get the first because of it. He was at the first down marker and took him and, and made a move and went backwards. There's a flag on the ground. I don't know if that's an inadvertent. On the blue. Ah, and it goes against Tennessee State. Personal foul charge to Tennessee State, so Goss and the rest of the posse 
live another day because they'll get the first down with that one. And that's a big one, a 15-yarder. So each team is doing everything that it can to allow the other team to stick in it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, but, you know, things are happening, yes. <laughs> this is not, I, I said that earlier, it's not a clean football game. There's been a lot of mistakes. You expect that with a young football team. These, these players, uh, there's a few seniors on the team, but a lot of these guys are getting their first starts of their careers. Keith Fawcett is now in the ball game as your deep back, the tailback. He takes the pitch on first and ten. Fawcett still up on his feet, get the first down, knocked out of bounds, down by the seven. Keith Fawcett. I like young, how he ran the ball. Young man from Memphis, Tennessee. If they get Fawcett and McLaurin running like this for the rest of the year, they got two pretty good tailbacks. I mean, he ran with a, with a purpose. And when he turned this corner, look at the blocking he has right there. Two out front blocking his full back, as well as Kevin Thomas, 71. And he turns the corner, even the tight end, Marcus Rogers was blocking for him. And Stevens made the tackle. He's been everywhere, the safety, the strong safety. Inside handoff this time for Jackson State going nowhere. Damian Duxworth takes the ball. And that inside has not been there all day. The inside, you cannot run on Tennessee State's defensive tackles and nose guards. You, you cannot run on them. Not with Danny Roberson and Manny Robles in the middle. 270, 275. I mean, they don't, they don't, you know, they stay right in their general area. And if you try to run it in there, you don't, you don't get any yards. Second down and goal. There's Fawcett again on the outside. This time the Tigers waiting for him, although he does pick up about three yards on the carry. Walter Reese is the man who drove him out of bounds. On this particular run, he should have tried to turn it up. At some point, you want to turn it up and get your, get your shoulders going towards the end zone. As he gets this ball, follows his blockers, and keeps running to the outside, he needs to turn that ball up. As you see it from the backside, at some point, establish, you know, north and south. So here we go. Third down and four for a touchdown. Jackson State trails by seven. They really need to get the ball in the end zone. They're going to try and pitch the other way and come up short. This time, the pitch with the Stacy Smith. Where is Nathan McLaurin? Why isn't he in there? Well, Stevens was there once again defensively. But you're right. We haven't seen McLaurin on either of these plays. He's, with the faucet and then this guy. No, he's, he hasn't been in in this series. He fumbles the ball in the last series. They don't put him back in. And I mean, he would have put this in. The, he would have put this in the end zone. Well, he has 184 yards rushing. Talking about Nathan McLaurin. Well, fourth and three. They're going for it. Fourth and they goal to go. Get seven. And here we go. Little play action. Going back the other way. Has a receiver. And great defense by the Tigers. The ball was thrown a little too lightly. It should be pass interference. That he was hit before the ball got there. You can't hit the receiver before the ball gets there. I don't know if they're going to call it. Well, Kent was clapping his hands like that. Pass interference. Pass interference. They get the ball back. The ball was such a floater. If you watch this, now the, the whole premise of this play is to roll out one way and slip the receiver back the other way. Now, see, he's hit before the ball gets there. How about Danny Roberson, 88, going back? He's hit, right? Boom. See that? He never has a chance to make the play. And Torrey Thigpen is just continually trying to make a play. <laughs> Jermaine Beal is the linebacker who made the contact initially before the ball got there, number 50. So first and goal for Jackson State. Quarterback sneak up the middle. And Kent is short. Gets and, to about the one-yard line. And Reese <laughs> down there shoving a little bit. And this is where it gets down and dirty. This is this is the this is the grunt work right here. And you wanna you wanna establish the line of scrimmage. The offense wants to move you across the line of scrimmage. That was pretty much a toss-up right there. A lot of blue. 
she's across the line of scrimmage, but it opened the hole. Second and goal, I'm gonna ask you. Second and goal, they go Kent up the middle again with the quarterback sneak. And everybody, and you've got Jackson State players saying touchdown, but no one else. And now a flag goes up. Touchdown is the signal that they're giving that us. That was the latest touchdown <laughs> signal I have ever seen. I don't know what happened there. That took way too long to say touchdown. And then a flag came up before the touchdown. There's this line play again. Look at that. Goes through, plow drive. Now, we can't see because of the line judge here. But I think there was some angry players For just counting the call and may have put a hand on the receiver, I mean, on the uh, referee. And I don't know how he called this a touchdown. I don't, I don't even see the quarterback. And it took about 25 or 30 seconds before he actually called a touchdown. Well, that'll bring on Brian Reynolds. And we've watched <laughs> Brian Reynolds miss two point afters already. He had one blocked, and before that, he hit the uprights. He needs to connect on this point after to tie things up at 33 apiece. Tim Manning is the holder. He is also the, the slot receiver on this team. And he is holding, and it's been an adventure almost every time. Manning is a brand new holder this year for him. But the kick is up, and the kick is good. And Brian Reynolds ties this football game up at 33 apiece. I think we're just warming up, Charles. <laughs> yeah. So take your coat off and stay a while. Taking care of mom's a thankless job. Thanks for your own stock in the electric company. And she's so busy, she never has time to eat a good lunch. Well, Betty Crocker's changed all that with these brand new bowl appetites. Add water, microwave it, and in minutes, a lunch made just for you, like pasta Alfredo. And she finishes every last bite. Delicious. New Betty Crocker Bowl Appetite Lunch Bowls. What a great idea. <laughs> There are times when you have trouble sleeping because you can't stop thinking about the tensions of the day. Try something different. New Aluna Sleep, the herbal supplement that won't knock you out, but relaxes you so you can drift off to sleep naturally. Aluna is not a drug. There are no groggy side effects. It promotes a natural sleep pattern in just a few nights. New Aluna. It doesn't make you sleep. It lets you sleep. Well, thanks to a quarterback sneak by Robert Kent, Jackson State has tied this football game up at 33 apiece with just seven minutes left in the game. As once again, we bring you the pageantry that is black college football here, Jackson State and Tennessee State. George Johnson along with Charles Mann, Joe Claire also in the house. And so are a whole lot of folks. The announced attendance, 52,113. Not a bad crowd for a college football game. So Reynolds will kick things off. And now it's time for this number three to do his thing. Julius Hall at the 20. Scooting out and slips. At about the 32, 33 yard line will it be first down for Tennessee State. A look at the scoring drive. 10 plays, 44 yards. A couple of flags, a little bit of pushing. Lots of name calling, and we're all tied up. <laughs> okay. Still making mental mistakes as a young team, and I'm talking about Tennessee State coming into this game, they had 18 penalties in just two games. Wow. And they've had their share of penalties. Penalties in this game that kept drives alive. Penalties in this game that gave the ball back when it was kicked off, and you know punts that were called back. And here we go to the air again. Going deep. Pass is caught. Wonderful pass Julius, Julius Hall. Hall. And Kenton Evans is in a groove, folks. Let me say this. Julius Hall was covered. He was covered as well as you could be covered and still made the play. And you, and you see Kenny Bryant saying, look, I did all I could do. I was all over the guy. Look, at he is all over him. Wow, what a catch. That ball was thrown where the only place that it could be caught by the receiver, and that is to the outside shoulder. 34-yard pickup on that play. Kenton 
Nevins just answering everything Jackson State does. And I'm talking about the quarterback for Tennessee State, number 15. Evans, fake handoff, gets away from one defender, has some time. Little pump, and scoots out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Didn't I just, I've been talking about Maurice Greer this whole night. <laughs> I even talked during a commercial about Randall Cunningham and how Randall Cunningham used to elude us. And you missed so many sack opportunities. Number 96, Marcus Greer, the defensive end, comes free and cannot stop Kenton Evans. You talked about Tennessee State and the mistakes they're making in the penalties. 13 penalties for 103 yards. So again, true to form, they are getting flagged a little too often. Here's Evans. Whips that pass, and boy, that was there early. Flag. Early there, contact. There you go. Pass was intended for Ron Jackson. And there was a pass interference call. Flag is lying back at the 14-yard line. And that flag was thrown by the the back judge who is looking at it from the end zone angle. He had a perfect vision. I, in fact, I watched. I looked at him when I thought it should have been a flag, and he was reaching, pulling it out. And once again, they're they're going after Kenny Bryant, which definitely held the arm of the receiver right there before the ball even got there. He kept his arm down so he could not extend it to catch the football. And talking about penalties, that's now Jackson State's seventh penalty of the ball game. Philippe Mills is fired a foul. First down. And with that, they pick up another 15 yards. So in the first half, this game, in first half, it was 20 to 20 to six going into the halftime. An ugly 20 to six. 20 to six. Who would ever thought we'd have a ball game like We've this? We've seen some unbelievable plays, some good returns, some good catches, some good running. Here's Rob trying to cut back. Rob still on his feet. And another flag comes flying in after he picked up four yards. Seeing a, a, a bunch of missed tackles, and that was a holding call on Tennessee State. A bunch of missed tackles, and even seeing uncharacteristically Edward Reese ma uh, missing Rob on there. Rob. You can't leave your feet when you're trying to make tackles there. There was Edward Reese missing right there. A bunch of guys reaching out with their hands. that moves them further back to the 32 and once again these are the kinds of penalties and mistakes that hurt a young football team as they're trying to develop first down Evans it comes to pressure and Evans able to get rid of it and find a receiver in Donnell Brantley and another flag down and again just terrible tackling out there. Edward Reese came out and tried to bowl him over as opposed to wrapping him up and bringing him down. And you've been harping on it all night. Well, what happens is when you normally see these kinds of missed tackles when guys get tired, Jackson State has been out there a lot. Look at the replay here as Kenton Evans decides where he's going to go with this football. And that's been Donnell Brantley and that little uh, pass, that little toss, if you will, has been very successful yes, tonight. Karan Key turned one of those little flips into a big-time play, a touchdown run. Hold it on the offense. This game is, is getting even uglier by the min minute in terms of execution on the football field. We were just talking about the penalty factor. 18 penalties in two games for Tennessee. Well, now they have 15 in this game. 18 in two games, 15 in one game. That'll be the first thing that Coach Reese looks at <laughs> when he talks about how we can get better, how we can improve. Just take away half of those penalties, and, and we win this game going away. Evans fakes one way, comes back the other way to Hall. And a good defensive play that time by Edward Reese, who wrapped up and said, no, I won't be pushing people down on this play. Grabbing and wrapping. How many times have we called his name? We've called Edward Reese's name a bunch of times. Yes, we have. And that's why he probably is the best middle linebacker in the swag. Nice play right here. Play fake one way, come back the other way. And Edward Reese, while he's being blocked, is making a tackle. Well, Jason McAllister trying to make the block big number 76. Second and third. Intercepted. And, and Luton still up on his feet. And you cannot stop out 
out there, folks. You got to keep on doing. And Mario did. Makes the interception. You can only pick on somebody so much. You remember Cecil Forbes, number 38, started in front of Mario Mooton uh, today. Yes. And Cecil went out with an ankle injury. And Mario came in, and immediately we began to call his name yes. as he, he began to uh, get involved in the play. This one, he just steps in front of the would-be receiver, Dan, I mean, uh, Julius Hall. And the reason why he was able to do that is because Kenton Evans kept his eye on the one receiver the whole time. You read the quarterback's eyes, and he, he read his eyes the whole way he looked at Julius Hall. For Mooton, that's his second interception of the season, returning that back for 19 yards. And now Jackson State. Going to pitch it, trying to get to the outside, and nothing doing. Great defensive play for Tennessee State there. That was Antonio Jones stringing Keith Fawcett out. Where is Nathan McLaurin? Is he injured? Is he tired? Are they a little upset with him for the fumble? What's going on? Why isn't he in the football game? Well, we're trying to look across the field right now, see if he's on the sidelines or anything of that nature, maybe nursing some kind of injury. Second down. Five wide and receivers. And finds his receiver. Pass is caught by Robert Jacobs. And Kent really has, you know, again, not great numbers. Every but ball. five of 19, you know, it's nothing to go home to mom about, but, but it, there's just, he seems to make the play he needs to make. Once again, I don't know where Nathan McLaurin is, but he's been highly successful tonight at running the football. And I guess if he's not in the football game, you don't have to worry about the run. And so Tennessee State can pin their ears back and come after Kent. He's on, trying a quarterback sneak again. And on third and one, there's a lot of tussling going on in there. I don't know if I have my quarterback running those quarterback sneaks. And they didn't give this a good spot for Jackson State. And I think it's going to be fourth down. Well, I, it, it looked like he was going to be short. Well, he, I don't think he got over the no, line. He, no, he's on, on the line, and he has to get over it. So this is going to be fourth down, and with 346 to go in the game, they've got to go for it. i got to tell you something. I'm still looking for number 30 on the sideline. Here we go, fourth down. His extra effort got and him the first down. that extra effort did get him the first. <laughs> so Kent picks up the first down. You know, this may work out for Jackson State. With 3.34 in the football game, they got another set of downs. They could move in to field goal range and leave it in the hands of Brian Reynolds and the holder, Tim Manning. Or they could try to get into the end zone and not leave any time on the clock for Tennessee State. Again, got that wide open offense. Can't looking downfield. Can't throw the catch! Oh, my! The Derrick Crossley! They call it no catch. And that would have been a great play. That was a nice move by Kent. They double pumped, looked one way, and there we go. There's a shot of Nathan McLaurin. So he, he's walking around. It looks like he's okay. We'll get back to that in a minute. Look at the replay here. A, a pump there, like you go into story, number 13. But then he throws the ball down the field. And this was, he bobbled it. Uh, he did come out. Job. He did good camera work right there. Frosty just fired. 9, 175 pounds, not used a whole lot. Right. And still looking for his first reception of the season. And that would have been a big one. But with 307 left here in our football game, we're still tied at 33 apiece. We'll have the final after this. They're the kind of folks who take pride in taking care of their car. Who'd rather take the time, save the money by doing the job themselves. In other words, they're the kind of people who turn to AutoZone every week. And while they come to us for the quality parts, for the everyday low price, sometimes they come just for the advice. And that's okay. Because at AutoZone, giving people what they need is what we're all about. Finding your dream home 
protecting it. Ensuring the future for your family. Investing for your most important goals. Millions of people build their future on the strength of Prudential. Which piece of the rock do you need today? Today's Black College Football Classic has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. And by McDonald's, we love to see you smile. Were you trying to rap there? I, I'm loving that flow. That music's just, I, I was working it. Yeah. Okay. I was. All right. <laughs> and there's your man. All right. So Nathan McLaurin on the, on the sidelines, and not on the field as Jackson State chooses to throw it. Reese with some pressure, couldn't get ahead of Kent, then still on his feet. Okay, he's a tough guy. Show. He's a tough guy, though. He, instead of running out of bounds, he tried to walk the tightrope down the sideline to get the extra yardage. You like to see your quarterback do that. I don't know if it's too smart, but you like to see your quarterback be a man about it, you know? Well, Reese forced him out of the pocket. Great pass rush by the outside linebacker, oh, number I 40. You. I got you looking at that kind of yeah, stuff yes now. Yes, you did. Okay, all right. Great pass rush. Yeah. Forced him out of the pocket. There was nothing that he could do. I like the linebacker play tonight on both sides of the ball. Both linebackers it has been solid. have done very well. It has been solid. 258, timeout on the field. 33-33. More after this. Taking care of mom's a thankless job. She thinks we own stock in the electric company. She's so busy, she never has time to eat a good lunch. Well, Betty Crocker's changed all that with these brand new bowl appetites. Add water, microwave it, and in minutes, a lunch made just for you, like pasta Alfredo. And she finishes every last bite. Delicious. New Betty Crocker Bowl Appetite Lunch Bowls. What a great idea. <laughs> Especially with the athleticism of, of both of the quarterbacks. A penalty free drive? <laughs> that too. It's a quarterback draw. Yeah, they're getting so much on a defense. A legal man down the field. The free oh. spot. Then they called. Well, how can they? Wait, wait, wait. They called. They called. They called. participation. So that means they either had 12 men on the field. Coach came out and tried to throw a forearm. <laughs> Once again, you see the offensive coordinator, John Shannon, right there, orchestrating this. Uh, Robert Kent's numbers tonight 13 rush yards, positive yards, 17, sacked three times for 22 yards. So, so now he's got he's, a, <laughs> so 
That's 13 rushes for 17 yards. 13, excuse me, yes. So, so look at the <laughs> positive five yards. Or my, negative Minus. five. Minus. Negative five. Minus. That's, that's a shame. You know, you can't blame that all on him. The offensive line really has been no match on the outside for the linebacking core of Tennessee State. But, but these are the kind of mistakes that you talked about. And again, another penalty this is for number, Tennessee State. This is number 17, right? <laughs> I think it's number 17, which is like, should be a record. Actually 16. Here we go. First and 10. Now you keep the ball on the ground, and you just work your way downfield because you've got to be within field goal range. Yeah. Although Brian Reynolds is your field goal kicker, and he has yet to convert on one all year long. That was Keith Fawcett with the carry. He picked up close to six, seven yards. Where's my bruiser? 5'11", 215, freshman Nathan McLaurin. Looks Although like this was a nice run. Watch how he keeps his feet moving right here. Keeps his feet driving. Positive yards. And B.J. Fletcher was in on the tackle. Fox still rolling. 150 left in the football game. All tied up at 33 apiece. Jackson State not in a hurry. Fawcett, great block out oh. front. Fawcett running over one or two guys. And then dropped the football down at the eight-yard line. But they're going to say he was down. Did you see, <laughs> did you see Damian Ducksworth and Marcus Rogers take number 56 linebacker Desmond Scantling out? That's what freed, look at, at the point of attack right there, there's a big pile up right there, and that has the, at the bottom of the pile is Desmond Scantling. And Fawcett picks up seven, excuse me, but McLaurin just still hasn't gotten back into the game. I don't understand it. He, he must be not feeling good, hurt. He's got 184 yards. I know if I had 184, I'd be trying to get to that 200 mark if I could. Inside handoff, Ducksworth on first and goal. That was good positive yards right there, but that play has not worked all day today. I mean, if I was Damian Ducksworth, when they called that play, I'd say, please, let's call something else. <laughs> well, if I was the quarterback, I'd look at him and say, you don't want me to get it to you to the outside, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please. Ball is now marked at the six-yard line. Timeout with 57 seconds left. As they, you take a look at Jackson State. They, they've eaten up the, uh, and here's the timeout situation. Jackson State owns two more. 57 seconds, so that should be plenty enough time to do what they need to do. I would take a shot at the end zone on this next play. I throw a little fade route. Um, you know, Kent has done a good job of throwing the ball high all night, right. so, you know, but and see, you need to run, you know. But with it being second down, you really want to just let that clock continue to run, I would assume. You're going to put it in the hands. I mean, Brian Reynolds is your senior, and though he's 0 for 4, wouldn't this give him some confidence if he is able for, to convert? Forget to about confidence. I'm trying to win the football game, and my best bet is going for the end zone, not leaving it in the hands of a field goal kicker who struggled. Yes, uh, he I mean, has struggled. But, but and Reynolds, we can't blame it all on him. We got to, you know, a lot of people got to take the blame, but I'm trying for the end zone. It's second down. I'm going to take two shots at the end zone. I would not run the football here. Brian Reynolds, as we're talking about, is the field goal kicker, who last year was 11 of 15 from field goal land. Converted on 11 of 15 of them. His longest was 41 yards. And he was the most efficient kicker in the sweat. But this year he has struggled. But I got a feeling Jackson State. They're running the football here. Uh-oh, we got a little fake. Now we are looking past into the end zone. Ooh, that was so And that dangerous. was a dangerous play. And that is why he's not thinking pass, baby. Keep that ball on the ground. Fade route. The fade route. Give, it, give Daniel Guy a chance. This is his home. He's been begging for the ball all night long. Give him a shot. Throw it up in the air and let him run underneath it. Here's the replay. And it looked like it was going to be a quarterback rollout at first. And Marcus Rogers, his vertical is uh, <laughs> a little suspect. Well, at 240, I don't know if he can get up that high. Yeah. Okay, they are in shotgun now. There we go. Third and goal. Pass again. It's too high. It was intended for Daniel Guy. That is not the kind of pass you throw on a third down play in the end zone. In the red zone, 
inside the 20, the defense is shrink. It shrinks. There's not a lot of space. You throw it to the outside. You don't take a chance with a kid who hasn't thrown the ball well all night throwing something like this. I don't know who, who could have caught that. The guy with the T on the back of his hat. Too tall Jones might have been able to get to that one. 46 seconds left, and here comes Brian Reynolds. And you hope, as you see the numbers. Oh, my goodness. That He's 0 not, for 4. That is not good confidence right so there. So he's actually 0 for 8 on the season. It's big. It's blocked! And Big Doc still loose. And finally, someone falls on it, but it doesn't matter. Jackson State may have recovered, but Tennessee State takes over. First and 10 with 37 seconds left on the clock, tied up at 33 apiece. If, if, if Robert Hughes and this Jackson State football team loses this game, I'm telling you, as you see the replay there, number 22 blocks that Antonio Jones. And he didn't have to do much to block it. He just ran in there and it hit him. Is it because he's not getting any loft on his quick kick? Is that what it is? Is that what you're uh, uh, that, suggesting? Let, let's start with that. <laughs> and then let's go to Mark Mosley's uh, kicking camp in the offseason and, and, and get some skills on this. I mean, that's, that was very, 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 very shaky. Mark Mosley? Mark Mosley, I think, still does a kicking camp. Former kicker for the Washington Redskins. Straight on kicker, not that soccer style mess. Put on one of them steel toe boots or something. <laughs> Kick to your heart's desire. So now if you're Tennessee State, you've got the football. Kenton Evans has thrown the ball pretty good here in the second half. Evans is 19 to 32 for 267 yards. <laughs> now it's clock management. You know, we saw Michelle we showed the graphic a minute ago. Tennessee State has only one timeout left. You got 37 seconds. You've got to run your two-minute offense in 37 seconds. There's big old Desmond Scantling. Neither team has gone to overtime this year as of yet. Their field goal kicker has kicked a 48-yard field goal. And we're talking about Seth Good Owens. He's kicked a 48-yarder. It's as long. You saw earlier in the game he was he tried a 50-yarder or so. So here we go. Kenton Evans we cannot get away from the big paws of Marcus Greer, who finally shakes his arms and says, I got one. It took him all <laughs> night long, and he finally gets one on a play. He shouldn't have gotten that. Kenton Evans should have been and threw that ball away. You save your time, you throw the ball down, you throw it out. And now he ends up doing it on this play. He wasted the down. Looks like he's limping a little bit, too. Don't forget today's Southern Heritage Classic. Been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Log on for lowest fares at www.southwest.com. A symbol of e-freedom. 15 seconds left. And if you're Evans, I guess you're looking to get it downfield. Do you want to take this team to overtime? You may not have a choice. He's got two receivers split to either side. Rob was his lone setback. Evans finds Rob. Rob trying to get out of bounds in as much yard as he can. Down, actually close to midfield, actually at the 45-yard line with seven seconds remaining. They can run one more play, and it needs to be like a down and out where it's going to take four seconds at the most. They, they need to at least have three seconds left on the clock. You throw a timing route would only get them to about the 40-yard line. This route can't go over, over the 40-yard line or else they're going to run out of time. That was 19 yards. This pass is short. There's two seconds left on the clock. So it looks like we could be going to overtime. <laughs> could <laughs> be. No, <laughs> we are. Mean, which means both teams will get the opportunity with the football at the 25-yard line. You can work your way to the goal line and each team gets the opportunity to score. So it's not sudden death. This is no, how we sir. This is how we played it. I, I went to University of Nevada at Reno, and we came out to Eastern Kentucky and lost in an overtime game to them on that format. So here's our last play of the football game. Can Evans make something special happen as he throws downfield? 
He's got plenty of receivers back there, and it is intercepted. Pass intercepted by Derek Watson. And with that interception, we go to overtime, folks. 33-33 is our score. We'll settle things here on BT right after this. They come to us for many reasons. Because we save them money on what they need with their everyday low price. Because we help them solve their problems and get them back on the road. And because we stand behind the parts we sell with a warranty that's good at more than 2,500 stores coast to coast. Fact is, people everywhere come to us because we're AutoZone, the largest auto parts retailer in America. And there's just no place any better. Our flight's delayed. Oh, come on. Collect. Yo! Hey, kids! Dial 1-800-COLLECT and you'll save mom at least a buck or two. Save a buck or two? Oh, she'll love that. Only if she likes saving money. Don't forget. Forget? For a collect call, dial 1-800-COLLECT. I have five words for you. Mm-hmm. You're cute. You're coming with what, us. What's going on? Whoa. Woo wow! <laughs> Let's ride! 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. and that opportunity. Of course, once the first team with the ball scores, the other team gets the opportunity to match that. If at the end of possession for both sides, someone has the lead, they're your winners. Nothing is sudden death. So now let's go down to Joe Claire, who has a report. Joe. Yo! We are down here on the field. Tennessee State, Jackson State, crunk beyond belief. I have my man here, y'all know BET's hits from the street. Uh, do you want to give a brief summary of what you've seen so far in, in, uh, in your own little language? Well, damn, at first, it's like Tennessee's going to get that ass to spank. Whatever the coach said, who's ever put, he put in somebody's booty, they got it coming back. And right now, it's time, 33 to 33. Who's going to win the game? Joe Cleavy, you were the commentators to take over. Super Hippo Trader. You heard from Hitch, you heard from Joe Clean. He's back in the Georgia Charles, baby. Soft the hook. <laughs> so now time for our, toy co our coin toss. <laughs> and this, of course, will determine who gets the football first. And if you're in this situation, Charles, how do you feel? Would you I rather want the have? Football. You want the football first. You I want, want to put the it football in there. first. You I want, want to put the, the pressure on him. Okay. okay. This is like a golfer. You want to. You want to make the putt. Right. You want to get in the hole right. first. Right. At least that's what Tiger told me. <laughs> Is that what he told you? Not that tiger. No, not that tiger. I'm gonna say he's not, not that tiger. I'm not talking about Tony the majors. Tiger. He no. doesn't have three majors to his credit this no. year, does he? No, he doesn't have a triple crown either. <laughs> What a game this was, folks. I mean, it started out and it looked like it was going to be all Jackson State. Nathan McLaurin had a 68-yard touchdown run and followed that up with a 47-yard run. And then they got another touchdown. A 45-yard touchdown pass, the long story, that is, and they led 20 to nothing talking about Jackson State. But then, right before the end of the first half, Amariah, Rob, ran in from five yards out to pull Tennessee State within 20 to 7. Then in the second half, TSU just came out and they were flying. They scored touchdown passes, as we're going to find out who's receiving. 
actually not receiving, but gets possession first. And it's Jackson State. And I still want to know where Nathan McLaurin is. But back to that, then it was Brantley going to haul on a halfback option pass for 17 yards to Very bring nice Tennessee play. State within 20 to 13. Then Evans to Kayron Key for 25 yards, and we were tied up at 20 apiece. And from there on, it was just sort of back and forth, back and forth. But credit Tennessee State with not giving up in this football game. Down 20 to nothing at one point before the half and were able to score, missed the extra point, went into locker room 20 to six, came out of the locker room after a serious speech by Coach James Reese at Tennessee State, and they rattled off 21 straight points. Actually, they rattled off more than the other 21 straight points before Jackson State came out of their little fog so and started competing again. So Jackson State now has possession first, Ball, as I said, at the 25-yard line. Lone setback is Damian Ducksworth. They try the wide receiver screen pass to Tory Thigpen. He picks up five yards on the play. That was smart. That's smart. We haven't seen that all day by these guys. That was a smart play. Five yards, real quick. Get the ball out of the kid's hands, and you move forward. Yeah, you need to be able to practice in a whole bunch of this. That, of course, is Brian Reynolds, who had his point after blocked, or actually field goal attempt blocked, as you see in the red zone. But Reynolds had his field goal attempt blocked near the end of the regulation, which sent this game into overtime. You get a fumble, it's your ball. And he has really struggled. And it, we, can, we cannot blame it all on him, this Brian Reynolds. But see, now Brian was a guy who, as I was saying earlier, right. after week one, he was 0 for 3 against Howard University, right. decided that he was going to quit the football team. Didn't come to practice Monday the next day, didn't come to practice Tuesday, didn't come Wednesday. Coach Robert Hughes says, listen, I had to grab hold of him and let him know, you are my field goal kid. I need you. We're going to stick with you. Third down and five. If they don't get the possession on the fourth down, then it's a uh, well, they're going in the end zone. Touchdown! I do Why? not believe that. Because Lauren's story is 6 5. And we've got a flag down on the field. I do not believe <laughs> he threw that into triple coverage and it was caught. Unbelievable. And now we've got illegal motion. And I think I saw that offensive wide receiver moving. And they get him. At the top of the screen, it looked like the wide receiver flinched. Look at this. Now, throws, a, does a pump. I still don't like his feet, the way he sets up to throw that. You know why he caught that ball? Because he went up with his hands. Didn't wait for it to come into his chest. He went up with his hands and grabbed it out of the sky. That's how you, that's how you supposed to catch the football. Long story has two receptions for 63 yards in this game. His longest went for 45 yards, and one of the two catches went for a touchdown. Had a chance to score there, but they called him back because of a penalty. So here we go. And Thigpen makes the catch. And that's a first down. So they get another set of downs. If he wouldn't have done that, they would have had to, um, after the fourth play, the fourth down, he would have had to turn the ball over. Well, that was third and long, so they would have probably brought Reynolds in and tried the field goal. Uh, okay, well, don't, don't assume that. <laughs> I might have taken my chances on fourth down. But you talked about how Lauren Story made the catch with the hands. That was a pretty good catch also by Thigpen. Throw that fade route with Story. He said he's 6'5. Throw it out up to him. Let him go get it. They can get another first down. Ball was marked at the 11. They try that inside handoff, and nothing doing as Danny Roberson is there to greet the running back. And you've talked about it. Trying the middle of that defense has really been it's, it's an effort and futility. It's, it's silly. Damian Ducksworth was the man with the ball, but there's big Danny Roberson. All OVC tackle last year. He had five and a half sacks. And he's just a junior. So now we've got five receivers 
in this formation. Three to the left, two to the right. Rolling out, Kent. Kent still on his feet, touchdown! Robert Kent takes it in from 11 yards out. Jackson State puts six on the board. Robert Kent has played gutsy football all night long. Again, nothing pretty, the numbers aren't great, but just gutty football. It's amazing as we look at the replay here. He really had nowhere to go with this ball except to run it. And because it's such a small area to work in, no one wanted to leave their receiver and have them throw it over their heads. And get, nobody wanted to get burned. So instead, everybody stayed on their receiver, their men, and he got to run into the end zone untouched. Right. Big point Big after, point after it's very crucial. It's very crucial. Manning, the hole is blocked again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's blocked again. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, uh. You know what? They better put a watch out on Brian Reynolds tonight. He may lead the team again. I mean, after something like this, you said he left. He didn't want to show back up. I mean, I feel bad for the kid because a lot of this... And coach, you see the coach as he walks by. The coach really didn't look at him. Let me say this about that particular one right there. We have too many people coming through the line of scrimmage. As you look at this, that was blocked from his knees, though. I don't, I don't care. Still, you normally don't have. Now this is the touchdown run right here. Very nice, not even touched by anybody. Like I said, they stayed on their receivers, not wanting to leave their receiver, and then he throws it because he hasn't passed the line of scrimmage. So now they'll get it on the 20, uh, 25. We'll get it on the 25-yard line with four, four downs. And Brantley, halfback option again, and almost intercepted. If that would have been intercepted, the game would have been over. Absolutely. Xavier Denson was back there defensively. They tried that same option pass, but they scored the 17-yard touchdown to Hall. Going to the well. <laughs> Going to the well one too many times. But this time, Jackson State was all over. You don't want to see either one of these teams lose this game. We talked about in the open how, you know, both of these teams have struggled. They're both one and one. This is, a, you know, it's not a conference game, but it's a pretty important game for your club trying to set the tone for the rest of the season. Once that regular season play begins, you're right. Here's Evans. Short drop, looking for Julius Hall and good defensive coverage. Excellent defensive there. coverage. Excellent. If there's scouts in the stands, that is the kind of play that they're looking for. They want to see what kind of running, I mean, what kind of defensive backs can can make this kind of coverage. I mean, this is tremendous. Kenny Bryan has done a good job all night all long night. against Julius Hall. He knew he was going to have the best receiver, and he has buckled up the shoes and come to play in this one. This so is very crucial. Third down and ten. They got to get the first down or go ahead and score a touchdown. Evans over the middle again. Now the receiver. Touchdown. Julius Hall and credit Evans with being able to look off that one way and then find Hall the other side. And Kenny Bryant is complaining that he was shoved. There are no, there is a flag down. There is a flag down. It's a late flag and he definitely does look him off. Looks one way, turns the other way. Kenny Bryant felt like he got pushed and that's what he was complaining about. Well, we've seen a lot worse push-offs tonight. Yeah, now it looks as though the referees have picked up that flag. So here we go. Seth Good Owens, if he can convert this, the game is over. And how big a miss that'll be to Brian Reynolds if he misses the PAT and Seth Good Owens comes in and kicks this one. And of course, a timeout was called to kind of ice the kicker. Not that Seth Good Owens can be iced. He's a pretty confident young man. He's got a 48-yard field goal to his credit. This is just, these are supposed to be just chip shots. These are extra points that you really don't pay any attention to. You know, it's just something that you do. We want to remind folks to please stay with us. The movie Murder in Mississippi will be played in its entirety, immediately following our football game. 
and this thing could be over in a couple of minutes because once Seth Goodowens gets back on the field, he has an, a try for a point after that'll ice this football game in the first overtime. And I wouldn't be surprised if one more timeout is called. I don't know if you get a compliment of three timeouts during this. I, I, in fact, I don't believe you do. But... Seth is doing a whole lot of hard breathing. It's Seth to shake it! You've got to be kidding me! No way! Seth Good Owens shakes it, and boy, you can hear the sound coming from the other side of the field. Everybody on Jackson State side said, Phew. This is amazing. I, I, don't, I, mean, I didn't even say anything. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, at least the ball got up in the air and had velocity, but he sure shanked that. He was breathing very hard before that kick. He's, that's why I, I particularly don't care for soccer-style kickers. That's why I mentioned Mark Mosley. Everybody knows that right away when he kicks it, he never even looks up. Well, why don't he go over on the sideline and stand with Brian? <laughs> because this is, yeah, Brian Reynolds and Seth Good Goodowens so can other, stand together. So in other words, misery does love company. Oh, absolutely. So now we've got to go back to the middle of the field. We have to find out who's going to have possession of the football first again. Yeah. <laughs> This is kind of interesting. This is kind of interesting. It's, um, if anybody ever, you know, misses the football season and the off season and they can't wait to have the football season come around and people are raring to see it, well, you got four hours of football today, folks. And there's the young man who has done a great job at quarterback for Jackson State, Robert Kent. Look at Jackson State on that miss. Reacting to the miss field goal. Okay, let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Nothing rah rah about it. Just going to work. Robert Kent, eight of twenty-five passing. <laughs> Those numbers aren't too impressive. What's For impressive? What's impressive is he's kept this football team together and in this thing with ugly numbers like that. By the way, 15 carries for nine yards for Kent. Like I said, that's not impressive, but doing all the things he has to do to help his ball club stay in this football game. 39-39, who could have ever thought we'd see a game like this? We are in overtime number two. Both teams, as Charles just mentioned, coming off losses. Last week, Jackson State lost to Texas Southern. Texas Southern's win was a big one because it was their second win in 29 meetings against Jackson State. So congratulations to the young men down there at TSU. As for Tennessee State, they're coming off a loss to North Carolina a and the very same team they lost to in the first round of the Division I AA playoffs last year. That loss for Tennessee State ended a 20-game regular season winning streak. So both teams looking to rebound in this one. Tennessee State has the football first in this overtime. And Amalai Mom, Rob, is dragged down. Good play defensively by Zach Grady. Rob loses three yards. And you're looking at me saying, you're trying to say that name, aren't you? I'm trying the best I can. I'm going to start calling him A-Rob. <laughs> This is A-Rod. Well, I'm going to have to call him because they're going to keep going to it. You got this feeling. Here we go. Second down and 12. Evans. This time going for all the intercepted. This one's intercepted by Vince Davis. His second interception of the ball game. I tell you what. I would give. I'd probably give a, a B maybe a B-minus to the secondary next. Secondary is, they've gotten a lot of turnovers, but they've gotten beat at times. They've caused, you know, pass interferences, and this is a second look at this. Just overthrew them, throwing it into double coverage, and actually, that coverage is coming from the safety position. 
I'll tell you what. Free safety position. As this season starts to transpire, they're going to have to find somebody else to throw to besides Julius Hall all the time. Defenses are going to start double teaming that guy. And guys like Andy Durge are going to have to step it up a little bit. Toriano Morgan. But here we go. Flea oh, flicker. Flea flicker, okay. And they're going down to the end zone. Oh. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Daniel Guy. But he only was three people. Oh, yeah, only three people covering him. So they didn't go for any of that flea flicker mess. You know, they <laughs> he should have held onto the ball a little bit longer, you know, as you run up into there and then you pitch it back, mm -hmm, you, you mm -hmm. know. A lot of times, along with a flea flicker, is you have a receiver stumble or act like he's blocking. You don't just take off out of there. You act like you're blocking for a second and get the people to pull up, the, the free safety and the strong safety to come up. Then you take off. Well, I'm still seeing Brian Reynolds, and I know oh, he wants another chance Does he? to I redeem don't himself. I don't know. I don't know about Five another receivers team. in this pattern. Wide open receiver right there, and the catch was made by Tory Thigpen. And again, he made a mistake trying to make the move. Could have had the first down, dragged down by Walter Reese. <laughs> was at the first down marker, but then, because of the defensive play by Walter Reese, who's been outstanding in this football game, and Charles has talked about how the linebackers have really picked it up, but because of his play, it's now third down and one. I cannot believe we're in the second overtime, and Daniel Guy, number three, Memphis native, has not caught, in a, uh, caught a pass yet. Well, here's Fawcett. Is going to be short of a first down. I'd go for it on fourth down. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> you would, sorry. I'd go for it. You would not bring would Brian not, Reynolds no, in. No, I wouldn't. And he would understand. I, I believe he could understand that. <laughs> We're trying to win this football game. You know, and right now, I mean, if we could get it down, you know, in the extra point range again, yeah, I'd give him another shot if that's all we had. So here we are, fourth down. And looking over there to see if Brian Reynolds is going to come on this field. Go I see Tim Manning coming out. Down. And Reynolds is coming back. And a couple of guys are trying to catch him and want to talk to him. Go for it on fourth down. I would not be kicking this football. Now Brian Reynolds, Reynolds is, is going, going back. off the field. Yes. They're, they're going to think about it a little bit before they make a rash decision. But I'm telling you, I'd go for it on fourth down. Do you get in this situation and you ask your team, you're the head coach, mm -hmm. does your team have any say whatsoever in that? I mean, kind of helping them out? Absolutely not. Okay. Other than encouraging Brian Reynolds. Yeah. I mean, they need to be over there encouraging him. But they don't need but to. But no, do. I'm calling. Robert them. is going to make this call. Today's Black College Football Classic has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of the freedom and by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. So here we go. 33-yard field goal. Here we go. He could be a Tim hero Manning right is here. His holder. Oh, and another timeout. <laughs> they're going Let's sweating. put him on ice. Give him skates. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? I said earlier I wouldn't want to be him in this situation, but you know what? He can be the hero yes, right he can. here. And it would bring back his confidence. How about some of the teams that have been playing extremely well this early part of the season as we take a look at our top ten? And there's going to be a couple of teams out there that are going to be upset that they're not part of it. And I'll give them a little shout-out. But Florida a and and North Carolina A&T can't argue with us about that one, can you? No. But Phil no. Cookman, who really has played extremely well with Patel Troutman as their quarterback, is third. Winston-Salem State. And I haven't heard anything about the Hampton game. And we're still looking to see if we can get any kind of result whatsoever from that one. But Winston-Salem State taking on Hampton University today. And if they got that victory, that's a big one. Arkansas Pine Bluff, who we saw last week here on Black Entertainment Television, is moved up to number five, Texas Southern, Tennessee State, Jackson State, Grambling State, and Southern round and out our top ten in Southern. Here we go. Here we go, Hanging Brian. around. There we go, Brian, from 33 yards out. The kick's up. The kick is up, and the kick is good! Brian Reynolds, go on home and have a good time, son. You just won this football game. Forget the first four. Forget it. You let it go. Brian Reynolds is your hero. As he leads Jackson State to a 42. Look at him. Look at 
Bryant. His first field goal of the, of the season. season. And here it is. The snap, the hold, it's good. I thought it was clipped there. It, it was man. not. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. It's too many people coming free on this, though. Look at that ball. Unbelievable. Brian Reynolds, 33-yard field goal, and leads Jackson State to a 42-39 win. For Joe Claire, Charles Mann, I'm George Johnson saying good night, everybody, from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs>